guess what, pal? What? What do we got? We're professional now. Are you ready to do this? I am so ready to do this. Taking us in with Creed today? It, there's Don't a reason why you're playing it? Creed. Oh, I see. There's a reason I understand. why they're playing All right. Creed. I, I know. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's just nightmares from Florida State. It is Collider Live. It is Wednesday, and we have a full show today. Welcome back, myself and you. It's just, uh, I'm happy to be the, uh, yeah. God, what was that guitar's Mark something. I'm the Mark something to your Scott Stapp. Sure. And uh, <laughs> ye yesterday. Mark, he's a good guitar player, too. Yeah, I believe it. Um, I was listening to the show because when everyone explained it pretty well yesterday, that we, I was out for the first half of it. I thought you were going to, well, I was out for the whole show. Mm -hmm. You were out for the first half. I thought I was going to be on for some of it. I couldn't. What happened was the original reason I was supposed to be out was because I went and did interviews for Star Wars Resistance, the new animated show. Got to talk to our buddy uh, Donald Faison and Bobby Moynihan. Great dudes all around. Uh, yeah, and where does that show take place in the Star Wars universe? But a little, not too, not too. It's right near the time of uh, Force Awakens. I don't know exactly how many months Ooh, or whatnot, okay. but it's right around that time. All right. Talked to uh, Christopher Sean and Susie McGrath, who are also leads in it. That was what I was supposed to do. So I knew that I was going to miss the second half because it took place, you know, in, in like a little bit outside at like 11:40. So I had to get out of here. Then I got the news that Richard Dreyfus was going to come in. It's Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> he was in yeah. Jaws for one on one. <laughs> and not only did he, and I wanted to prepare, and I did that. I prepared for it, and the crew, Roxy and Makuga and Riley, took over, and it was a good show, boys and girls. I listened to it wow. yesterday. Thank you. Or, and, I, and, and this oh, morning. Thank you so much. I was watching, I was listening to because I was saying. Oh, you're talking about our show. Yes. I thought you were talking about. Oh, what? You're like, I, inter I interviewed Dreyfus, you're like, and it was a good show. Well, I thought was, you were talking was, about the interview that you did with Dreyfus. That, I will, that I'll maneuver into in a I second. Imagine but I imagine it was great. It was, and I want to that, yeah. that give a little bit more. I'll give that more time but to compliment them. you need to them. prep for that. What? Like, like, uh, yeah, you spent you your life prepping for it. You've no. seen American Graffiti a hundred times. I'll, You've seen Jaws a hundred times. I'll tell you, though. It doesn't matter how much the answer. What you're saying is actually true because I prepped a lot because I wanted to really. There was a lot of facts I found out. For example, I found out he's from. He lived in in Bayside, Queens for nine years. When he, oh, when did he grew he? Up. Yeah, and we talked about that. that. That was when you guys were talking. How would you open with Dreyfus? That's what I opened with. That's right? obviously Bayside is the setting for Say by the Bell. That is incorrect. <laughs> um, but let me get back to that for a second because I do want to talk about the the Makuga and and Roxy and Riley were holding it down. They had some fun conversations, and there were some things that were uh, that were said. The first thing is you keep bringing in a reference that when I got mad at you at the Schmo show, it was not Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day was the day because Ellis was on that show, and Sadie and I were. We, that was an actually really fun show. Sadie and I were out and we were listening to the show. We should go in and talk. And we went in there and had fun. Okay. The show that you did. Anniversary? The, no. It was just a random show that I had to go to a screening. Ah. Ellis was out of town and you and Catherine Reitman. Yes. Um, and Ken. Wasn't great. Nah, wasn't nah great. not a great show. But but <laughs> but we but we've since learned because you crushed it yesterday. Yeah, it was, oh, thanks. It was great. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I can't I was, remember if I watched it. It's taken me six show. years. Taking me six years, but you got I it. I think because when I used to go on the road in the early days uh, during the Toad Hop days, I would I would try to get back to the hotel room in time yeah. to watch the live show to make sure you know when you were there I, I was confident, but I wanted to enjoy the program. And then when you weren't there, just to make sure that like the place wasn't burning down. I can't remember if I watched that that episode, the infamous episode. Or not, and just wondering, like, oh god, do I even tell Christian what's going on? I remember or where I, I was. No, no, I was listening after because I saw it was and a really what was bad. was so bad about the episode? What it was, well, it was a bad screen. It was a bad screening, first of all. And I remember I'm well, listening. What do you mean a bad screening? The screening that I went to see. I remember oh. the movie being bad. I can't remember what the movie was. And I'm like, you know what? The hell with it. I'm listening to the show on the way out. And then they just start roasting me <laughs> while I'm out. That's what. That's it what, was. It was. That's it was, what it was. And I'm like, and I'm like, I, I'm not on the phone. 
I'm not there, and I and I, and I said to McCuga, I'm like, hey, you know, I really want, I want to give you a shot to like host the show by Ellis and I, and the guy's like, d- like ripping into me, and I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> so I tr- I was gonna go home. I turn around <laughs> and came in, and then just went off on him. Yeah, on air, on air. Yeah, of course. I was kind of like you the backup me. running back got the ball and fumbled four times in the first quarter. <laughs> and like he's never playing again. It was like, a oh, Nathan cool, cool, Peterman cool. performance, yeah, but, but that was not the case yesterday. I thought, was, I thought it was great. Thanks. But I I picked up a hidden moment in yesterday's <laughs> show that and. This is not your fault. You were you were you were talking, but you didn't. I don't think you picked this up. This was amazing. Okay. Um, and I had Beardo pull it this morning. So they were talking about stand up comedy, mm-hmm. and Roxy was it was asking like how you, how you do it, what you know if, if you were going to what what would go into making a set and all these things. I thought McCoogie did a, did a great job as far as like you know going through through his, his experience. But then, there's this one moment, and I want you to listen to this clip. But okay. you got to listen to Riley. Riley is the is the key to this because he was not heard during this clip. I don't think anyone heard him. It was kind of glossed over. It's my favorite clip, and I started laughing. Do I need to watch it? As no, well you can hear it. Okay. Just, just all right, all right. play it. You think and I should just d- quit while I'm ahead? Here's yeah. the thing: you, you need to get up on Probably. stage and. <laughs> <laughs> They're going one more time. One more time. I should just d- quit while I'm ahead. Here's the yeah. thing: you, you need to get up on Probably. stage. And <laughs> I was like, I was like so she, brave. she was going so hard so into brave. trying to like, you know, what do I do this to it? Maybe yeah. I should tell. And, and there were three. You gave three examples of what she should probably do, which I thought were, were good examples. Yeah. It's either try to do some one liners. Yeah. Right. Um, pick on the dudes in, in the room or tell some funny stories. with clips. That, Knowing her, that's where I say you should go. Right. That was your but all three good examples. But then Riley listening to all this is like, nah, just don't even bother. <laughs> You with little faith. I love taking oh, the I one moment of doubt Roxy. that Roxy had yeah. and just just running with that. Like, oh, probably. That well, you, you mentioned it was glossed over. I was trying to create a funny, and no one <laughs> did. It right through it. Well, like, it worked. Right. It worked. I thought I'm it was glad really you good. brought you it back what, up. Uh, apparently, Beardo brought this in. What he did for Roxy? Was really oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, you want to hold that up for yeah, the kids? He didn't do that for Roka. The comedy bible. Okay, and I feel like people don't do this enough. He owned this book because he had looked into it a little bit. I guess he decided not to, probably from some advice from Riley. <laughs> and then yeah, he so he lent it to me to read, which I will do. You know who uh, you know who else owned that book? Brett Sheridan. Yeah. You know who else owned that book? Huh. Mark Ellis. Did you, you know who else took Judy Carter's comedy class when he first moved out here? This guy. Wow. Do you know whose class I audited but did not take? Judy Carter's class. No, but I can't even tell you the guy's name. Uh, he all I know is that he was in the Wedding Singer, and he's the he's the father uh, in the in you know when, when Sir, I will strangle you with my microphone wire. No, 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 no. no. That I mean, no, it's the one he goes. You're the worst wedding singer in the world. That's pal. the guy. That's the, that, yeah. that guy. Yeah. And I and, and Wedding Singer is still to this day my favorite Adam Sandler movie. I love it. And. I saw that he was teaching a stand-up comedy class. I'm like, I'll go. And it was that. And it wasn't necessarily that he wasn't funny, but when he was teaching all these people and they're all sitting around like writing notes down, I'm like, this is not how you do stand-up comedy. That's why when you guys were talking about it yesterday, you're like, should you take a class? No. I say no. I am. I. I know. I. I am. A, I am against a stand-up comedy class because I. I do. Because here's the difference. I think that. You, you cannot teach someone how to be funny, obviously, but you can teach format and structure. But I think you can teach certain joke writing principles. Correct. Mm-hmm. But there's uh, th- my problem with classes isn't the class itself. It's that people think that they took a class, yeah. and now you're going to be better at stand up comedy, right? Because you're not, right? <laughs> no, no. That, that, that's, so then, and what's that, the point of taking? That's it? kind of my point. You I learned th- joke yeah. structure yes. and things that you can take. Okay, this to is the what stage. I learned today. I'm pulling out my phone just because I took notes. Can on you just it? point yeah. out that Judy Carter looks like my mother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in like 1984. She's got a Deb McCuga vibe. That's, That's yeah, probably definitely. taken in 84, too. Yeah. All right, here's what I learned. That you have to have the premise, which is broad, the setup, which is specific, the punchline, which is a surprise, a tag, which is another surprise, act out, yeah. and you could like act it out, and a callback. Would I learn that in class? Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, you would. You would. And here's my Jesus. problem. Here's my problem with that, because that, that's essentially what she did, and that's what people do. What she just did... She sat in a class, whatever, <laughs> let's say this was a class. And it was she wrote, Stand Up 101, The Fundamentals. It has 104,000 views. But that's what I'm saying, though. That's, that's, <laughs> but that's, that's my problem, is that when you hear that, when you hear that and then you write it down, oh, that's what I need to do. No, you need to go to the comedy club. And I not necessarily go up all the time, 
but you need to go and be around it. Listen to it. Pay attention to it. Who do you like? Why do you like them? What are they doing? Pay attention to the rhythms of it. That, to me, is how you learn. That's your comedy class. Go to the comedy clubs every night. That's your class. But he gave an example of how to do it, too, though. So I feel like that's... Fuck that example. Oh. Just go you and do it. Yeah, I mean, it's... Who is the no. comedian? Is it like... You want to feel a certain amount of preparation broken. going into your... First, especially somebody like Roxy, who loves preparing. It's it, you want to feel prepared. You don't want to go up there and oh, no. be like, "Oh, I'm going to do crowd work with whoever's in the front row." Like, you want to go up there. You want to feel prepared. Right, but here's how you prepare. I think you write... I started preparing. I started. To, I have now yeah. a new notes called joke, mm -hmm. and I'm. I have three preparation things going on okay. from mm -hmm. yesterday. Things that came to me that I was like, that's funny, but I don't know if it's actually funny. And yeah. that's what's like, how do you test that? That's a, that's You test it on stage. Yeah. And that's that's what Makuga was talking about. I think that there's it's different situations though. It, you're not, you weren't on, you weren't wrong when you said that you know, a lot of times you started these, you started these open mics and you bomb every time. Sometimes. That, it's a lot of, that is true for a lot of comedians. I, I was lucky enough to where I started in Tallahassee, and my first show I ever did, well, my second show I ever did was in front of like 100 people that I knew, and I did 20 minutes. So I'm like, Let's oh, see. this is the way stand-up comedy works. And then my third- And it went well. Yes, but that was also, I had the support of, of, of 100 people that I knew. <laughs> And then the next the next set, I didn't realize also you have to do the same jokes, and I tried to switch it up my next set. Uh, and you have to do the exact same jokes. I mean, a lot of it. You, or you want you want to do variations of that joke to get them better. That's the whole Build. point. That's what I think. That's what comedians do wrong sometimes is that they go up, they do a set, they do a joke when they're first starting out. They get a laugh on it. Well, now I'm going to try a new one and abandon the last one. No, work on that. Get it better. There's still jokes that I did five, ten years ago that I would have done. Uh, that I do now that I would work on because I can get them better. I then like a notepad. I mean, you can start with a notepad. You need you? a lot of yeah. notepads. Yeah, uh, okay. you need a lot. But you of write notepads. them down, Mark. Like you're not just thinking. Them write in your down head. everything because yeah. you think in your head, and then you're like, "Oh, this is gold." Yeah, there's no it. way I'm forgetting this one. Yeah. You you're gonna lose all the yeah. nuggets unless you write yeah. them down. You gotta write let, down. Let me ask you something, guys. Oh, hey, uh, somebody of this. Hi, how are you? Uh, just watching, give up. just watching. Uh, probably just watching uh, stand up. <laughs> I've I've gone to uh, my good friends. Oh my ribs, where. They do like essentially open mic night yeah, yeah. and people try things out. Oh, and yeah. I notice a lot of people will always have that notebook and they'll go, Oh, what am I talking about? Is that usual like on stage, for on you mean? stage? Depends. They bring their notebook. It, it depends. I, I never really like doing that, but I think I, it depends. I, like if it's, a, if it's like at a coffee shop, yeah, yeah, if it's at a coffee shop and you, there's like 10 or 15 people there and you're doing it, I never liked it. But in a full show, like when it's a show, I I, I hated it. I, Comedians do it all. That's the time. why I'm asking because when I see it, I'm like, yeah, I don't like it. Unfortunately, it it's, Mrs. Maisel it. does it. It's different yeah. standards for different. She didn't bomb her first time. Comics. No, she bombed later. Though. She's also a TV show. You That's know? true. I mean, you, you, need, you need something to have hope. Mrs. With. Maisel yeah. didn't bring her thing on stage. Did yeah, she? she did. Remember, there's a whole episode. Yeah, with the cards and she dropped them. They the tell her to bring. I've only watched the like the first five episodes of season. It's really good, by the way, and she's great. She's great stage. Has um, anyone been more perfectly cast for a show than her? No. I mean, she's perfect. She's perfect. I mean, you know, Ted Dance was pretty good as the bartender in Cheers. Yeah, but no, you grew I, into that role. This, this, this was like tailor made I for somebody. I think, it was she's, her. I think she's she's phenomenal <clears throat> in it. Um, but -ha -ha. as far as like the notebook thing on stage, I don't like it when. Well, you're right. If it's the big show. Don't bring a notebook on stage. Having said that, I've done sets in a in a sold out main room where somebody who's like, if you're a comic that's doing theaters, that's like selling out arenas, that is where you work out. Is yeah. the comedy store main room on Saturday night where that's like the big show for me for the week. Mm -hmm. If you are Rock or you're Chappelle, you go up there. You that that's the smallest crowd you're getting. Right. So yeah. it's a bring right. it open. It so levels, it's different, different levels, different for sure. strokes. Yeah. yeah. If, you're a brand new, if you're a brand new comedian yeah. and you just got past the comedy just, store and your first set is in the main room, you're going up as if you're performing in front of a hundred thousand people. Yeah. I, I just I, I can't stand the uh, because they never use it as a crutch. Like I've never seen, I've never seen professionals, even if they go up there with a notebook, use it as a crutch. Like, right. oh, I'm just working stuff out. Don't ever give I, me that I, excuse. I couldn't, couldn't agree like, with Like, hey, I'm just trying stuff out here. I've heard that a lot of times. You, you hear that, and then you also hear it. My favorite, like, crutch where you know it's not going well yeah. is when an open micer says, like, oh, I'm just living my dream up here. Like, <laughs> oh, God, you're yeah. going to live in the dream yes. route? This, th well, there was a couple of things. <laughs> my you know, two, my yeah. two biggest pet peeves when it comes to that, because we've talked about it before, is if you wrote these jokes down and you thought, I'm going to perform those tonight, have them in your head. 
get like take 30 minutes and just like memorize something because if you go up there it. and you look at the thing yeah. like i've seen somebody like aziz ansari go up there and just like keep looking back to the book and like flipping pages on stage i'm like it feels like a lack of respect for the audience it does that's yeah. that's what i'm saying my, my, I, what i'm I, not aziz ansari yeah. or whatever but the other thing i hate or is whatever. open mics when somebody says what else what else what else yeah. what else what else yeah. what else and the way that you should do a process you asked about process yesterday to yeah. where it's like if you have like let's say you're doing six minutes just connect the dots. So when before the, in, when you're going over your set, it's like okay, I'm gonna I'm starting with with my coffee joke, which will lead into the park, and then the park leads into the dog, and the dog leads into you know my my lady, and then I got those are called segues. But what, whatever it is, but you but not, it's not segues though. It's bullet, <laughs> but it's not segues though. It's, it's the bullet. They're birds. It's, it's the bullet points of where the joke needs to go because you got to hit these actual jokes. You don't have to necessarily segue into all of it. But what I mean is just bullet points to how you get there. If it is a segue. Fine, you gotta, you have to you have to be clever in the segue. Yeah, but you then you close strong. I like I like knowing the uh, I, I like knowing the segue. If I have a, if I have a bunch of new shit, I'm trying. I like to know. Okay, whatever happens with this dog bit, right? I like knowing how I'm going to tie that into the next thing right. I'm doing. That's your so process. the segues yeah, yeah. are like the strongest. Is sometimes the strongest tendons, but you're you also going to go like anyway. I mean, you, I mean, can. you do when you start. I mean, no, you don't. One of my pet peeves. I've anyway said is it, a tough one. When I was doing stand up all the time, and I felt like I was, if especially if I saw um, comedians that were just coming up, whether it was the douchey seasoned c comedian, you know, going up to the guy or not, if someone used to go, "Okay, people." Yeah, people. Like I, 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 I had. I, I had a people phase. I, I know you did. I had <laughs> a people phase. I had a conversation. I don't know what you're talking about. So, you get certain well, the first words my buddy that you Sam, say on stage. Yeah, so you yeah. don't realize Safe you're words. repeating. My my buddy oh. Sam, my buddy Sam Tripoli was the king of it, right? And he'd be like, "People, come on, people." What do you think, people? And then he would What's do it. What's wrong with people? It, because he just. What you, am I right, people? Okay, people. It happened. It, it was just. It was a. It was a crutch. And and I remember. I think I did have a conversation with you at the comedy store though too. Uh, but it was, that was the one. It was. It was the. Or what's next, people? One of the funniest yeah. crutches I've ever seen. Because there's also a physical text that people have on yeah. stage, and we all have them. Yeah. It's just it, it's a part of the process. It's I work guy, the stand. This guy would uh, <laughs> every time he went up in the OR, he would in the he what? Would, in the original, the, the original room. room in the comedy store. There's like a table Duh. up front that comics, even if it's sold out, sometimes comics will just to feel comfortable. They'll put one of their legs and they'll like kind of rest it up on the table. Oh yeah, and he would do that, and a lot of comics do that. <laughs> And he would wear jeans, and with every punchline, he would yank his jeans up a little bit. Really? Not even realizing Who is this? he was doing. I'm not gonna say his name, uh, but it would just—he just keep yanking up his jeans until he looked like Huck Finn. Just wearing like, oh, wow. just wearing like oh, I know who that some was. sort of like shanty. He looked like Slider playing volleyball in Top Gun, <laughs> where he just had half the calf exposed. It was so funny. You have to tell but me. that's funny that maybe he did it on purpose. No. Uh, no. No. Um, all right. Uh, the other, the other thing you guys... Oh. Sorry, go ahead, Roxy. Well, what do you guys think about... Because something I'm nervous about is I'm a very vulgar person. Yeah. Like, and, and I'm a young woman. And I hear that, like, it's the worst for us. Like, don't try. Quit while you're ahead. Probably style. Probably. Because... <laughs> If I get up and be me, the acquired taste that I am, thanks, Makuga. Hey, hey. Uh, in a good way. Uh, yes. I think that people will be like, ugh. Well, nah. first of all, you got to embrace that. And that's yeah. you, and but that's, that's you, okay to like talk about balls and like boogers and farts so, and shit. So if you're going to do it, yeah. if you're going to do it, come on. You got to make it good. Yeah, you just got you. you oh. Don't the thing is, don't lean on it as a crutch. Yeah, and that's the main thing is that if that's legit, what you want to talk about, dude. What I would say with you, if you were going to lean into that, how you feel you're annoying. I think that's funny. Like the fact that the things that you do on the plane, the things that you feel like the stuff that annoys you uh, about you, you should tell people what, like, and you should say I'm an acquired taste. But this is this, this is a comedy class we can have another this time. Is, yeah, this is basically like a kid who has a golf club, yeah. and is like sitting in their living room. And they're asking questions about how you hit a golf ball. It's so like you just gotta well, get on the. Yeah, we just gotta go. To the, we just gotta go and, you, and hit the golf balls. But you want to know the first thing I tell everybody on the plane what? when I sit down? What? I tell every single person next to me that I would like to die in a plane crash. That's oh, perfect. God, I'm never flying. It doesn't with you. go over very well. No, I'm sure. Usually. Yeah, hopefully you really do that. Yeah, I really do that. What the hell is wrong with you? Well, what because I I just I'm trying to make them feel comfortable. Like in case That's we go down, what? It hasn't worked so far. I was like waiting for it. In case we go down, don't start your set off like that. But I. Right. That's not. 
a bit. Right, not, that's not part of my bit. Do that's this. not part no. that I wrote down. You just said on the plane, and yeah. I thought about it, and that's what I turned to people and say, I want to die this way. Yeah, and, the, and you will. I, yeah, take the comedy Bible away from her. <laughs> Welcome um, to Southwest. The, we have a passenger just, here. Yeah. Yeah. Roxy Stryer wants to die in a plane crash. I, mean, I think that could work to open up a set. <laughs> that would actually be really funny if like Roxy's sitting in an emergency row, and they're like, all right, I need your attention for a minute. They teach you how to do the thing, and okay, does everybody, I need your verbal consent that you're willing to assist in the case of an emergency, and Roxy's like, I think we're going to die today. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, oh. not willing to assist. Going down willingly. Yeah. See, Thank you. I, yeah, there's something there, but I don't want to talk about it right now. Um, and then <laughs> we, we also have uh, Makuga. Makuga, uh, the other thing was that you and Ellis yesterday talking about being married, you know, just basically signing out in order to get, get away. Correct. You savor that. Yeah. You savor that day where you can sign out to get away for a little bit. Because you don't have any days like that anymore? You have kids, it's over, motherfucker. <laughs> and I know you're planning, you're going down. So don't you dare complain about those nights you, you sign out. No, not yet. Oh, he no. wasn't, I was complaining. I, no, no, no. But he's just like, like you're but, another, you're you're the worst of I'm on another, another phase. You're another level. You can't of get to me unless I'm, I'm here. With right. him. Yeah, you can't get to me. I'm like Eminem as, at this point where you're just locked in and you can get to him as, if, you, if you diss him or something. But you're that's the about worst. It. You're, you're the worst because with Makuga, I'll still occasionally get a text like, hey, she's out tonight. <laughs> what, what, what can we do? Let, let, let's go set off fireworks. With you, I have to True. drive to your place. Are you alive? And question then mark. I'm not greeted by my buddy handing me a beer. I'm greeted by an army of family members <laughs> right. that also one demands I play basketball. The other one wants to be held. The other one wants. I'm the one that needs to be held. <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're the one that really wants to cry on the inside. You're right. I'm I just... feel like you're super accessible for being a dad. Actually, here. No, I'm not working. just not just here. Like all of my all of my married friends with kids don't respond to texts anymore phone calls yeah. they're busy you that's know. all he's got that's, all I, I know, that's it but i mean listen it's just it's your life is is, is it's those kids you're an inspiration for yeah. for people who have kids everywhere because you have found an occupation that allows you to see movies to see movies to, bitch yeah. about it. to just sit in a quiet room for two hours with something with a distraction yeah. but you also get to do this so you get to hang out this is as close as you get to just friends chilling yeah. Yeah, people don't understand yeah. that People don't get. People don't get. This is my social time. So when when I'm like, right, be around. Oh, I got something to do. You fucking come over here while I'm making a turkey burger in the kitchen and talk to me because I ain't gonna have anything. But see, I, I feel like that too, and I'm <laughs> single without kids. Is that this is my so this is my time to interact with you yeah. and and Roxy. And then when so, I when I go home, it's, yeah. it's, I have two lives. Yeah, it's like, hey, Mark, what do you, Mark, you want to hang out? We just did it, right? Yeah. But you we you just, have quiet time, and I can tell when really you're having think. quiet time at night. It's, you know what you do. You send me texts. Oh, yeah. What are we talking about? Well, I sent him a fart the other night. Yeah, he sent me a fart. <laughs> an audio fart? An audio yeah, fart. And I usually... Of your yeah. actual butt? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Or the, you... or the mouth noise no, you make? No, no, no. It's a real fart. Yeah. And what I've... Now Crazy. what I do... There were two, You though. know when you're going to fart? Two. This is... All the feel. time. Yeah. He what? sends it to me all the time, and now I just hold it up to Julie. You need to see right. a doctor. Which is hysterical. Yeah, but you know... But but then I sent two, though. I sent two texts today. And the second one, I was like... Uh, we're watching a movie. I'm not going to listen to another fart. And then you text me again. It's like, listen to that one. It's not a fart. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and and it, so it. I go, ooh, this one's good. And I pick it up. And it's Sadie ple pleading her case on why you uh, screwed up at the, at the grocery store. Grocery I store. got that one, too. I wanted to tell that story yesterday, yeah. but they kind of freaked me out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why? <laughs> because why I said, out? I have a story about Christian's wife. And they were like, oh, no. Oh, no. That's where I draw the line. Because I've already been on the thing of like telling Christian stories when Christian's not in the room. But yeah. I was like, and then yeah, we, we don't a want to difference between he telling right a story and being like, his face looks like someone stepped on it in a mud track. And it's like, Did what? No, but you know what I mean? It's something along those lines. <laughs> yeah, but it's a lot. I was like, I think it's I know. I think lines. I know the line, but maybe we're not allowed to bring her up at all in this show. No, that's no, fair. I the can, limit does not I, exist. I, I, there, there's certain, it, it, it depends on who it is. It's like a sports league where Makuga is known to get a lot of flagrant fouls. So the refs watch him closer. Right. right. Then now you, you look at me, right. you know, I'm like, I don't want to toot my own horn, but in, in terms of our relationship, I can get away with traveling every so often and nobody's yeah. going to blow the whistle. Yeah, well, what Comedy <laughs> Skull says, as long as you're not being malicious, you can talk about whatever you want. You earned it. Well, George Carlin said it all the yeah. time. George Carlin mm -hmm. said that anything is funny if you do it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like anything can be funny. Like literally every topic, there is not a topic. Now, now everybody can do it. Right. 
but every topic can be funny if you write it this way. Never blame the heard... audience unless, unless you've been doing it as long as I have. Then you can occasionally blame the <laughs> I haven't heard a funny Holocaust thing yet. Like, they, people of all the things that people have tried, that's the one. Like, I've heard Well, I'm glad funny... you brought that up. Cue the Benny Hill music <laughs> Here we go. Like, I, I wish people would stop trying with that. I feel like any time yeah. I go to the comedy store, at least one There's person. certain things you yeah. just can't do. Yeah. It's, um, it, 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 it's very tough. Yeah, Great. but I think Like, Holocaust. how are you going to spin it? I have. I mean, Ari Shafir used to tell a bunch. I mean, you probably would be offended by it, but uh, but he. he I'm not he's easily Jewish. offended. Hari, you going funny, to uh, New York next week? You going to New York Comic Con? Mm -mm. Mm, too Should bad. I? Yeah. Well, I'm doing a show there, and you know. Are you going to try a Holocaust bit? No, you could have had five minutes <laughs> yeah. if you wanted to go. Oh, oh. Jesus was a Jew. Uh, what would I do with true. five minutes? I'm not ready. I need uh, years. Years for five but, minutes. No, nah, years. Gotta, it's like swimming. You're ready it's now. like swimming. Yeah. You just throw you in the, the pool. End. Yeah. 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 Um, you got to get up there, dude. Can we practice in like a room first? Nope. No. Oh no, we can. It's called the original room for the comedy people. Yeah. I I think the best way to bring a bunch of people into the Studio B. Have Roxy stand up there, spotlight, microphone, and and we can be. Nope. No, no, nope. it doesn't work. No, I, I think I think the best. No, that's best, a little too safe. I think you go kind of the route that how I was lucky enough to start. Where I mean, my first show, like I said, I, I fell off the stage. You gonna fly uh, to Tallahassee? No. What I what I would do this time of year. Fly to Tallahassee, Tallahassee, and you have to work your way to, back to Los Angeles. Yeah, you gotta, yeah and tell jokes on the road, hitchhike, and, and it's like the movie yeah. Chef. If your car breaks down, you gotta yeah. tell enough jokes no. to Roxy. fix it. I yes. Now, if I jump in real quick. Sure. Uh, did you need years to, pr to to practice to be a host? Yeah. Did you? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, then never mind. She went to Shout four years of college. Yeah. Yeah. Cops yeah. just watched the sure. Creed yeah. 2 trailer like nine times and is ready yeah. to yeah. be yeah. rocky. He like practiced nothing. Yeah. Watch this guy. He's going to shut the room down. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I <laughs> Poor guy. It was, it, it, was, it was a fair question. practice hosting? No, I know. It was a yeah. fair yeah. question. She I, just not said, years, but like I was not good at first. And now I look back and I listen to my original stuff. Well, first of all, have you ever have you guys ever seen a video of me from when I started? Like I was looking it up. I was. You can look up like some of the after buzz like Jersey well, yeah. Shore or Gossip Girl okay, after yeah. shows I did Jersey Shore Roxy Strayer I, I'm so much for, I don't look First like me I don't hair. sound like me you guys can hear the audio and like I'm not not no, that I don't step on ago. people now but I step on people five years ago is that it yeah well, no, it would be more like nine years ago, probably. Nine years but we'll ago. See, you will Did, was that was it around nine years, years ago? Eight years ago? It's 2012. Uh, no, Jersey Shore has been. Two, I know, but yeah. I didn't realize after buzz was around Roxy that long. Realized that your first set's probably yeah. going to suck. I I'm convinced it won't. What if it's good? After but if it is good, then you get the bug. If I do a set, my first set, and it sucks, time. sucks, I'll be very discouraged. No, um, my fir my first set didn't suck, and then it was just like a steady decline back into sucking. Right? Is this her? <laughs> Slow. Yes, she I'm is. Like, oh, look, next <laughs> look week her. looks like it's going to be awesome. Oh, my God. This looks like it's going to be a long season We went through that last season. Is that your like sister? No, her name's season. Gabby, but we were but called the balls. I'm willing to stick with it. This is it, guys. <laughs> Sorry. No, we're, we're, like, no, no, like, we're, in, we're in all the way to the end. What we did like was how ha at least they were happy. There was happiness going on. I mean, still pretty good. was so freaking depressing all the time. No way. Here, you turn it off. You hear my voice. No, but the thing is, though, Roxy, what makes you, the reason why you're good at this and the reason why you're good in general is because when you because you just talk and you're like you're able to you learn things about yourself as you do more hosting but you're yourself you can tell you're the same Roxy there you're not trying to be my problem with hosts when they start out is a very a presentational lot of presentational like to think what am I supposed to be like you're just you she's always honest with her opinions yeah. and the thing that I love about that so clip brave. is that there's so many people who consider themselves professional hosts who have these these certain things that they do that annoy the piss out of me you're talking into the mic yeah. you have jewelry on but you're not banging it against the right, table, right. making noise. There's a lot of just technical things that you that you had from a very early age. But it, it, it's it, that's the thing I love about stand-ups. It is nothing like anything else. So just you you have to go up and do it. You can't get a studio full of people. You can't run bits in your car. You can't call anybody and be like, hey, is this funny? You just suck it up. You right. go up there. Well, it's three minutes of your life, and then it's over, and you can think about what you want to do with your future. You can run bits in step. your car. You just don't know if they're going to land. I mean, but you I, do that's what run I used them, right? I used, you say I, used, that loud. I used to run bits in the car all oh, no, the time. I, yeah, I do it all the time, but yeah. it, it's not a replacement. You, you, you don't, you're right. You, you don't know those know. metrics bars and they say, hey, not a meal replacement? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. a nice it's snack. Like, it ain't a meal. No, right. no. Um, it, ain't, it ain't pot but, roast. But, but snacks are better than never having eaten anything. If you go for your first meal, you've never had a snack. Yeah, you don't have to do with it. But again, I, think, I still think that the, this is something that we, and I was thinking about this as I was listening to that conversation yesterday, and it's something we've talked about before. Maybe we start to make it a little bit more realistic, is that I think that 
and not Tallahassee, but what I was able to do when I did my first like 20 minute show in front of all those people, and I think what Roca had the benefit of doing was going up in front of fans and people that knew who he was, is that we should really put together a look into putting a Collider Live comedy show. Well, one you, night. Yeah, I mean, you may be more right than you know. It, it wheels may already be in motion to get a lot of these these performers on one stage okay. together because. Uh, for the October 26th show in Los Angeles, we can get tickets to right now, MarkLSlab.com. Uh, th there's a number of names that I have some people booked that, that, that are great. Yeah. And then there's there's some other spots that are available, one of which is the hosting spot, which I, I've had conversations with people. With, with, with people who do podcasting in the afternoons. Scott who may want to be hosting it. And then there's spots open. If a, if a Sheridan comes in, right. if a Roka comes in, if Roxy, there's got to be there's got to be some sort of cutoff. Like right. if Roxy gets like five sets under her belt, then maybe and she, she feels confident. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Well, there you go. So then, and it's not because I'm being a dick. It's just because like you don't want to. You don't want to watch me fail. I'm not throwing yeah, you in the wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, the, that's something we should we should talk about. And by the way, hello to the. I forgot people are watching us right now. So um, <laughs> if you want to hashtag Collider Live and also in the comment section, keep on uh, keep on going there. And then if there's anything you want to talk about a little later, we we are going to the Creed Two trailer. Did well, you, Creed did you guys Two. To watch it? Yes, I did. We're going to talk about that in a little bit as well. Uh, we have movie news coming up, but I'm very excited at 11:30 because we have. A Monty Malco coming in, if you know him from 40-Year-Old Virgin, but he's in the new movie Night School. You're going to know him so, from Night School, yeah. yeah. Um, weeds, weeds, weeds. Yeah, weeds. I mean, he's been tons Romani of stuff. or Romani? I thought it was, is it Romani? I think it's Romani Malco. Romani Malco? Weeds. Uh, but I'm pretty right. sure. Romani Malco. Well, it's Romano's Macaroni uh, Grill. Well, <laughs> he also, I forgot that he's actually, he shot a pilot um, with Bonnie Somerville. They had a whole, huh. he played her husband. In huh. that, in thing. I remember seeing it back in the day. and they are, He's they, funny, they man. He's, he was great in Night School. Best part um, of Weeds, hands down. My favorite character. Well, weed, he will, weed. We, 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 weed. He'll be in here <laughs> a little later so, so we can talk to him. Every day. Thank you. But... Who's who's back there? Sounds like well, a that gag was of people. Yeah, that. Was that Riley? Was it you? I have no idea. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That yeah, was me. <laughs> well done. Smoke weed every day. There it is. Much better. That's what I was doing. <laughs> um, well, two couple things I want to talk about before we get into movie news. Uh, yeah, what's I want to give Ro well, I want to give Roxy some credit because Roxy was right. Um, I was at the Star Wars. I was at the Star Wars thing yesterday. The, resistance. Uh, I was at the resistance, <laughs> and as I was getting ready, I was I was looking at I I, I made it. What I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I, I tweet out like the Schmodown thing. If I tweet mm -hmm. out, I said to myself, I'm just going to tweet out links, and I'll tweet out other stuff. Right? Oh, wait That's a minute. Fine. So wait, wait, so wait. Here so, he comes. Uh -huh. So wait. So I, yep. tweet, so I tweet out a picture, because I want. You know, they wanted you to tweet out something. So I, I, I put the pictures of the resistance. I said, I'm going to meet with the, I'm going to talk to some of the cast. And I do. And I, and I put the picture out there. And some guy writes, he goes, well, try not to hate it. <laughs> and, I, and then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have fun with this. And I, oh, and, I, and I wrote back, and I go, you're not going to hate it. You'll like it a lot. And he's like, no, 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 you just seem to, to, to not like things and go into the negative all the time. And I go, I go, why would you go into the negative? You shouldn't go into the negative. You'll, you'll love these things. He's like, are you okay? I'm talking about you. And I'm like, no, I'm talking about you. Everything's cool. So he goes, look. So I, he, so it, it starts off with, uh, oh, I said, oh, you won't hate it. It's made for kids. It's cute. What do you, why do you feel you would hate it? You would probably really like it. He goes, sometimes it, it seems beans. like you, sometimes it seems like, uh, like, like you hate it related past in your past experiences. And I said, I can't believe you hate Star Wars on past experiences. <laughs> Just enjoy it, man. It's fun. He said, are you okay? I'm talking about you. I'm like, ah, you're fine. Seriously, man. Just watch Star Wars and have fun with it. Don't go hating on it. This show is fun. He goes, you too. Thanks for being a troll. You shouldn't troll anyone. You should be positive about it. It's okay. Hang in there. And he said, eat shit in Spanish. And I wrote, bless you. And he said, honestly, have a good day. So, <laughs> and I was laughing. I was sitting there with Ash Crosden, and I'm like, ah, the hell with it. This is what I just got to do. And I, so I tweeted, but Roxy was right. It was back in like three days. Yeah. Um, but, but I did so that. So are you back? Though. Uh, I mean, I'm back in certain in certain aspects, but no, I mean, tweet, back, more, more for links and other things of that nature. But <laughs> more for, what what a great ad! Hey, follow Christian if you want links. If you want to know what's going on in, in in you know stuff that we're working on and stuff that Collider's working on. If you yeah. can't get enough of HTTP, <laughs> but I don't feel like Twitter needs to be just a place for people to, like either tell jokes or. Well, or who had Christian getting? Pictures. Who had Christian three days in the hall? No, it wasn't back days. on it was social more, media. It was about a week. We should have a poll. I, I I thought he was going to yeah. be off it for at least a week. Um, it was a week. I yeah, said did, seven days. Did you delete the app? That's a week. From Off your my phone. phone. Yeah, I think What's it's... HTTP? <laughs> <laughs> 
stand up, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. She is the quickest mic comic on the mic. Let's hear it for Roxy Stryer. Yeah. Harry the. It's like a hyperlink. HTTP colon slash slash www. The link. The link. I thought it was an abbreviation. All right. Yeah, but I just I think Twitter <laughs> Twitter uh, it's, you just gotta you just gotta Good use time. it right because I said I said I just showed you yesterday. I said, this is my impression of Twitter nowadays. Just people throwing what what are you throwing at that guy? Why? Because what would he do? Something? Can you prove it? Somebody Not said something. But just hit him in the face. Figure it out later. It's like it, or, or you know, it's like it just is, figure it out careful later. With your that's shoulder. perfect. You're really throwing at him. I know, but it's just like <laughs> that, but I, that's what wow, it is. Yeah. It's just like it's like there's no it's. There's, I think that Twitter could be used for good, and I, and I told you that it can be. But I also think something you talked about it yesterday on with with the whole with the Johnny Depp stuff and all that stuff too. And and it's like there are there are times that Twitter can be used to really go after people who deserve it, get them, do it. If there's, but the, it also I talked about it a little. See, I don't know how much I can get into this yet. My interview with Richard Dreyfus yesterday, I talked to him for over two hours and fifteen minutes. Um, we talked for there, two. There was one point yesterday. You're in here, right? And I came. I came back from lunch, and you were in there. And I was like, "Has it been in there for a while?" And <laughs> Roka just goes, "I don't know what's going on in there," because <laughs> you've been in there so long. Two hours and fifteen minutes. It's either and, going really good this, or really bad. And, and this is what I got to tell people. Um, and this is what I said to Richard Dreyfus as we were wrapping up. I go, "We have been talking for over two hours. We've talked about your movies for maybe ten or fifteen minutes, and I have no regrets." That man, you you follow him to where whatever wherever he wants to go in the conversation, you let him go. Because I would bring up stuff. I mean, I brought up Jaws, and I brought up um, you know, I brought up Let It Ride, which I which I love. I was in Jaws, yeah, okay. And, well, we brought up and, and he, we brought up you know him winning an Oscar and everything too. But he would talk about it for a little bit. And his new movie, obviously, that he was that he's doing, and and then <coughs> excuse me, and then he would go somewhere else. And you're just sitting there fascinated listening to him. And then if I'm not going to go like if he's in the middle of this big kind of deep thing, then go, well, tell me about the aliens and Close Encounters. <laughs> it's like you got you to go with the conversation. And it just went in places that I didn't know it was going to go. And I and I was fine because I tried to get it back a couple of different times in the movies. But then I'm like, I, I, I don't know if I want to. I'm like, I was fat. His, like at the end of it, he was it's just like reflection on life and what it's like now to be a 70-year-old man and going through. And I'm like. It, 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 and even Cody, Cody, I, I talked to him this morning and when he walked in. I go, "Do you listen to any of that?" And he's like, "I walked in at one point. I'm like, what the hell are they talking about?" He's like, "But then I couldn't keep my. I, I, it was so burying a body in the desert. Yeah. Is, <laughs> it's a tricky business. I'm, I'm telling you, man. Like it was just. It, it was his wife came in at one point, sat down, and like, and it, it was. He is. He is he, one of the most honest, open dudes. That guy had no filter and was just. So Open he's walking lines. out. Everybody's getting pictures, right? And I was like, oh, I mean, there's my chance. So I gave him a Josh McCougar for Jeopardy <laughs> button, right? Yeah, yeah. And I gave his wife a button, and I gave his publicist a button. I gave him fridge magnets, and he's like, Oh, you're campaigning to be the next host of Jeopardy? Yeah, I could totally see it. I could totally see it. He looked me straight in the eyeballs, and I was like, Oh no, this is okay. You just <laughs> yeah, got well, the, the blessing. Yeah. yeah, you got the blessing from Dreyfus. Damn. But but and anyway, he was so. like, he like peered over Snyder's Snyder's shoulders. And it was like, what are you working on there? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was great. I'm telling you, like, Richard Dreyfuss hung out in this office yesterday yeah. for like it, four hours. It was awesome. And it was it was amazing. I got everything I needed from him when I said, Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. He said, I can make fun of you for hours based on yeah. that statement. Yeah. And I went, Matt <laughs> yeah. Hooper, it, everyone. Well, yeah. he was, well, he was saying stuff. He was saying stuff off air. <laughs> and I was like, and I was fascinated by it. And I'm like, would you, are you gonna, would you talk about this on air? He's like, yeah. And he talked about everything on air. It's awesome. Everything. Now, uh, I am I I'm really looking forward for people to see this interview and listen when to it. When is that going to be? The guys see th that's the thing you got to give the props go to Adam Smith, Cody and Copster and and Thad and Dennis and all the production guys because in Remsen they they work on this stuff all the time. They have so much shit that they're working on. This is over a 2 hour show. I'm not going to put any clips and stuff in it too cuz I want they, we're trying to get it up this week cuz it's I don't have any Is it going to be list. edited and cut down or you're saying it's going to go up as 2 it's hours? It's going to go up or well, it'll probably be around 2:15. You can get it on the I would got it I comes mean, out I, as like 7 minutes. Yeah, like I, we couldn't use right. any of it. I think you go I think you should listen to it on you know in podcast form. I'm I think, excited to listen to it. I think it. Christian Har the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff. You can also get Riley's show on there and there's and I know that we put yeah. on uh, Frosty interviewed uh, Casey Affleck yesterday. I think we're going to put that on there, but um, but anyway, th that it's it was it was fascinating, and I en really enjoyed talking to him because I didn't know I I didn't know where it was going to go. You really like um, talking. To you people. really like interviewing people. I like talking to people. God, that's the difference. 
That's, I think that's a difference with the thing. That's why I like my wait, show. Like doing wait, wait. You mean interview versus like, this isn't like a film versus a movie conversation. No, 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 this no, no, is no. like, interview yeah. is like, it, Go to is a like junk hey, kit. tell us about your project yeah, and, you're and, working and, on. An interview is like, so, and and this thing, I think that the today's, today's Malco's uh, could be half conversation, half interview, right? Because they're coming in here. Sure. Yeah. The one-on-one for me is just a conversation where I just sit there and I talk. And sometimes I forget that the camera's on. Like, I, I'm telling you, there's a portion of this interview where I'm just sitting there listening yeah. and you might hear me go really interesting and he talks for like 45 minutes and I might not even say anything because I'm just listening to him and I, because there's certain people that when they stop you say okay well there's part of the conversation where do you go next how do you how do you maneuver into what you he didn't need that he didn't need it he knew what he wanted to talk about and he just went down roads and I was just in the car that he, was it he uh-huh. wanted to ha- he wanted an audience he wanted that, people that, that's, to. That's good to bring up. Yeah. yeah. So sorry. So, Go for it. So he because walks, I love this. Because so he sits down, and then I say Riley, Riley's going to walk out, and and I go Riley can shut the door, and driver says, hey, why is this happening? He's like he's like he's like not, not, he's like I don't I don't mind. He's like not that I mind that you know the doors closed, but but. Can he sit in, or can we have more people come in and stuff? Yeah. Too? And not because he wanted, he was worried about what I was going to say, but he wanted, he he, he really is, uh, Mr. He's, he's, he's a teacher, he's yeah. a professor, yeah. and it's like, and he's like, and he wanted an audience, he wanted people there, and I said, like, well, I can have Riley sit in, and then once Riley Riley sat in for like an hour, and then I he, sat in and, for an hour, and he talked to both of us, yeah, and then he, he would, right, and yeah. which was phenomenal. I left to, to Riley get his left, wife. and he was fine after that too. I think because I made him comfortable that you know also that he didn't care and he was talking to me, but it was I mean. I'm telling you, it was it is by far the most the the most in depth, um, honest interview I've done so. But far. honestly, what were the aliens like in third uh, close I, I, encounters? I'm telling you, there's so that's much. A I, callback, that's callback, Roxy. That's the problem, though, is that I wanted. I read about I, that. I, I did want to. I did want to I'm ask good. him more. I did want to ask him more about movies, but I just I couldn't get there. Like, yeah. I'm back for the sequel. Man. I want, for for movies, he saw the Jaws poster and ET posters on the wall. And he said, do you know what E.T. is to me? And I went, and I'm losing my mind yeah. right now because it's my favorite movies. He goes, it's a sequel to Close Encounters. Oh. And I go, really? He goes, everybody asked me, where is the sequel for Close Encounters? And he said, Spielberg made it. It's called E.T. And he walks off. That's and I'm all, like, oh, I'll take it. That's okay, amazing. fun, yeah. fun, quick trivia yeah. fact. Yeah. Has Richard Dreyfuss yes. ever done a sequel? Has Richard yes. Dreyfuss ever Stake done out. Stake out. a sequel? Very, very. Yeah. Another stakeout. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, I thought it was not another stakeout. No, it's another stakeout. Another, another stakeout. stakeout. Um, it's not another teen, teen movie. movie. Last, yeah. last thing before we move in the news, and I want to ask everybody in the ta- uh, on the table here, too, because I'm sure the answer is yes, because your story about the, the creepy guy that came up to you yesterday in the morning. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Made me think of, I, am I, and you guys can tell me, because is this a problem or is this me being a grouchy old man? And I really want okay. I really want the, the true answer here too. Because I have remember now I have a I have a, a one year old that sleeps terribly. And so she's right near the window. Great taste in music, that one year old. She does have a good ta- good taste in music. So but there's this guy. And she's mobile now. She's mobile. Mm-hmm. There's this guy though, not when she's sleeping. That'd be <laughs> weird. But she but this guy he puts on his Bluetooth, right? And he walks across the street. Fuck that guy. All right, wait, just he, wait. he can just, go straight just, to hell. Just, just wait. And he walks across the street, and because he lives right across the street, he goes outside, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, and Bob's got the deal, and uh, we're putting in, uh, we're putting in uh, phone calls next week." And, and he goes to the house in front, and then he comes back in front of his house, then he goes back to the house in front, then he goes and he walks back and forth in a line. And I'm thinking to myself, "Do I say anything? Do I yes. go? I go go inside, dude, or am I the douche?" Uh, no, no, no. He's the dude. Does he live in your little... He lives across the street. He lives across the street. Across the street. This guy can... Th- th- I, I'm telling you. I have people that know Satan. I'll have a new level of hell created just he, for this he guy. Sucks. The yep. eighth circle is going to be occupied by this son of a bitch by himself. I can't stand these people. He I had sucks. one of these people in college before the advent of the Bluetooth is we lived in a dorm where it was kind of like an oval where you you know, you know could walk around and you it was like a big... Uh, like, like a lap you could do yeah. around. So this guy would get his core cordless phone right and he would start the phone call in his room and he would walk out and roam so you would just hear this if you're trying to study in your own room you just hear like yeah so yeah i was talking with her yeah 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 no one cares how important you think you are christian that's what it is what time what time are we talking uh, i mean it could happen it happens variations of the day sometimes it could be sunday sundays as late as 
We got to get him at night. Nine o'clock at night. Okay, uh, you're, you're in the wrong. Yeah, you're I'm in the wrong. Yeah, you're in the wrong. Wait, wait, he's in the wrong. Yeah, you're in the wrong. And Sundays and Sundays in the afternoon. Yeah, you're in the wrong. I'm no, in the wrong. Not, yeah, no. I didn't even do anything. Yeah. Sundays, in Sundays in the afternoon. So he could be, he can talk as loud as he want and go into a line until, back and forth. until 10 p.m. Yeah, you can. No, nope, nope, no nope. nope. good. What, what's the chat thing? Hundred percent. What's the chat let me, thing? Let me. You're a let me step in here because I'm going to defend both of you, and you're clearly wrong. But I love you <laughs> and I think uh, you're fantastic. Uh, often. Okay. Right. <laughs> so probably. I have my the building I've lived in for nine years butts up. Basically, we have a back parking lot, a small alley, and another building. And the building that butts up against us, all those back apartments have balconies, okay? Now, in the summertime, my building was built in the 50s, so there's no central AC in the whole building. So we have to keep windows open. There's got to be a flow of air going through. Oh, that's why you jump in the pool from the second story. Correct. <laughs> and there are... There are three apartments that have this happening all the time. A guy on a Bluetooth yelling, somebody, and I legitimately at like 8.30 at night. In their like, own apartment? No, this guy's not in his apartment. He's in the back alley going back and <laughs> forth with his dog being like, yeah, Jake, I mean, we could go. Right. And I'd lean out my window and be like, shut up. Right. No, you're wrong also. No, I'm not. You are. Listen, if you're on the phone walk yelling around the your block. Phone, walk around the block. Yeah. Walk, to somebody else's sit house? Sit in your apartment. No, walk around the block. Why do you have an apartment if you don't? Just, he, but Roxy, no, he's not. No. So look, Roxy, this is where the guy is, okay? Yeah, I get you're saying this he's is, pacing back and but forth. But he goes to this one, and he talks as loud as he can. First of all, I've been on the phone many times on my Bluetooth to just been, uh, say, hey, Mark, what's going on, dude? Because mm-hmm. you can hear me. That's 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 the, the beauty of the technology. How you know, old is this gentleman? Oh, he's got to be in his 30s, right? Yeah, and, and he's got shitty shoes, so he's not rich. rich. He thinks he's rich. Too he's young not. to be doing the dad's new cell phone yeah. voice. But he, but he walks. He goes like this. He walks like this. That's the other house. He goes here loud, right in front of my 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 daughter's room. Then he goes back, super loud. And you go back. And it's like, dude, why? Do you, I mean, I've been on the phone. Walk around the block. What are they saying, no. Riley? What are they saying? No. <laughs> so I got Jason. Have your neighbor piss on your lawn, then come back to me. <laughs> then it, I had. I think. Did I ever tell this story? Oh, uh, I think I don't know if I told uh, this. Funny. I don't know where I told this story. But this, this, so my neighbors, my actual, so I live in a, like a duplex, mm-hmm. right? And so we, it's like a little town, it's like a townhouse, and then we have a townhouse right. Uh, What's the address, just for no. reference? But there's, <laughs> but there's, um, there's, there are these medical students that live in the other one, and they're, they're great. They're great. Um, so they're always studying. They're always studying. They're, they, you know, they're, they're go to bed early. They're great. <laughs> Nerd alert. Get a podcast. But they've, been, but they've been there forever. But the thing is, so there's one guy, you know, one of the nicest guys that lives in the house has this barbecue or something, right? This is, and this is, this is like two months ago. I think I told you about this, Ellis. And they have this barbecue. They don't, it didn't tell us about it, which is fine, but it's loud. It's sure. like 1030 at night now. 11 o'clock is booming, like the voices in the back. My kids are trying to sleep. And do I'm, they do I, this often? Or? No, no. It was okay. like a one-time thing. So I just said I just, I just, just said to the to the guy, I was like, hey, you know, I walked over there. Very cool about it. I'm like, the kids are sleeping. He said, we're going to move everybody in the house. Fantastic. So then they come out at the end of the night, and they're camped out right in front in the garage where uh, my daughter could wake up. I'm like, oh, so I don't say anything. I'm waiting for them to leave. And then he leaves. Then these two people that were at the party, these hammered dudes, start walking back up. I'm like, what are these fucking guys going to do now? They're going to go back in the courtyard. So, and they start walking up the thing. I'm about to say something. They're in the courtyard. And they disappear. So I look to my left. And these fucks are pissing on the mailbox. right? And I, and I Your s- mailbox? Yeah. And I <laughs> slam down on the fucking window. And I go, get the fuck out of there, right? I mean, because at this point, now you're now, now and you're I, pissing. So me I walk back literally. down, and they run, right? And I go, and I, and I hit, the, I hit the street. I'm like, you're a fucking animal. I'm like, you're an animal. <laughs> Not only you're an animal because you're pissing on a fucking mailbox. Your friend invites you over to his house to have food, and you piss on his mailbox. Get the fuck out of here, that girl. You, Wait, that's a disgusting piss on pig. his mailbox that, or your mailbox? We have two mailboxes. They're right there. They're both. Okay. So he's, we're, if, if it's a fucking spray, he's hitting both of them. And I'm like, you are an animal, and that, and, and the girl you're with. Let you know that kid is an animal. He's probably gonna piss on you tonight when he falls asleep. And they just left. They didn't say anything. But and I told I told the na- I told the neighbor, and he's like, "That's what I would have done too." <laughs> so I'd rather have people piss on my mailbox than have to deal with the loud phone talk conversations at night. Being really? honest with you, yeah, that stinks insane. over there, man. You guys are. I'm in a room of insane people. No, this is crazy. Can you talk. defend what? your point? It's a 26 year old. Let's, let's give you the mic. Let's Go not ahead. criticize Roxy anymore for her beliefs. Um, what is your rationale? Yeah. For not yelling at the guy, I'm with you on the Sunday afternoon thing. That's just that—that's kind of like. Yeah. But 
the sun is down. It's 9 p.m. One year old Bluetooth loud talker. You defend him. Why? Well, first of all, I don't think he on purpose is trying to wake up your one year old at 9 p.m. So, yeah, but the way that Ellis just phrased it was like one year old. He, probably inside. Doesn't, he might not even know. He it's just socially a, unacceptable. It's, it's, I don't it's, think it's, it's socially unacceptable at 9 p.m. To scream as where, loud as you can when, on Bluetooth. When my grandparents are still awake. To scream on Bluetooth. Your grandparents, oh, in all fairness, can't hear the guy nope. as well as yeah. Christian. No one can. wants to hear so his conversation. Valid. What are they saying, Riley, in the in the chat room? Uh, a lot of people are in the middle okay. on on the, on all of this, but uh, okay. Look, maybe me on. sending him to hell was a little too much, it's but it's correctable behavior that needs I'm, to be addressed. I'm all right. You I'm really right. would go yeah. outside and say something. Wait, yes, uh, I would 100 yeah. percent. Let me hear. Let me hear. Half. Riley, finish what you're saying, please. There, a lot of people are in the middle. Some people are on your side. Some people are like you're overreacting. Uh, I like the piss on the lawn and then come back to me like that's the extent yeah. of when you need to be pissed yeah, all right, yeah, well, exactly all right, there's well, way bigger things to be way well there things. are bigger things and one of those things are, is some of the movie news going on right now that's not now that's not now that's not now that's that's <laughs> not, uh, the chat just got excited about and then, Creed same same thing every day we're doing good talk about Creed yeah we're doing Creed at 11 o'clock shut your ass um so Let's talk about some of the movie news that's out there right now, and then we'll come back and do... Yeah, honey, I'm watching the show. Yeah. Yeah, the, guy, the guy's going to talk about movie news. <laughs> wait, is he talking yeah. about me? Is he? Wait, did they do Creed yet? Okay, they did Creed. Okay. <laughs> oh, you got a one-year-old? Yeah, I'm working on a deal. Creed 2. Book it. Abs. Drago. Nice shoes, asshole. <laughs> Keep going. Adrian's dead. Put it in your house! Where's Brigitte Nielsen? <laughs> the car, yeah, the car's license plate is Southpaw. You give, believe it? Give me the Every devil voice. Every time the guy shifts and he looks in the rearview mirror, he sees his dead friend. He looks dead ahead, he sees the Russian guy who's fighting. And then, oh, shit. Oh, he, I, we were waiting oh, for the devil voice. I was, voice. I was waiting for the devil voice. There it is. This is Mark Ellis' helper. Um, if you continue on your Bluetooth, I will come to your house, rip out your ears. You can live with Roxy because she apparently likes when you talk to her in that voice. Damn oh, right, oh, oh can, can I get the devil voice real quick? <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's right. All right. <laughs> Welcome to Little Nikki. I, I am your neighbor. My name is Christian Harloff. I'm a peaceful man, but I possess a very special set of skills. <laughs> skills designed to kill people like you. I'm great at changing diapers, drinking LaCroix, and telling you to shut your ass. All right. Let's hit Perfect. out over nice. Let's hit, well, let's, done. Let's, well, well done. Mark let's well done, Marcus. Let's move over huh. to uh, some movie news. Oh, was that Roxy? Huh, huh. Or was that? Oh, what's that? Sinead again? All right, uh, let's uh, let's get into does movie my news. Huh sound like an orgasm? I didn't know what. It was. Oh, there you go. That's there a little it is. different. Huh. Uh, um, let's get. Uh, yeah, that, huh. yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> honey, I'm I'm gonna go outside and. Devil come. voice again. Oh God. Oh God. Oh, oh, here it is. Oh, yeah. oh, it's co- I'm hey, coming. Sure right. I'm coming. Here it uh, comes. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm gonna come. It's gonna feel like cinnamon. I'm setting up. It's gonna, I, gonna I, feel I, like I, cinnamon I, I, drizzle. Don't piss on the mailbox for your coats. I'm blowing. I agree with you on that one. Right. I think mailbox we should just piss. play with that voice the rest of the time. That's to it. Break. Oh, it's so much fun to <laughs> yeah. orgasm. Yeah, Can I have the voice to read the music? Uh, to if, read the news? What if no. he did hook up with a girl and her orgasm was like, huh? Huh. Well, that right. happened. Well, that, yeah, yeah, that's gonna hit. That's gonna that's hit a, that's a tough one. Josh, can I ask right. a question? Why is that a what if premise? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> forgetting Sarah Marshall. You remember that? You can teach a class on how to deal with it. Yeah. Um, all right, move it. Move into the next. Let's move to the first story. The Orgasm Bible by Mark yeah. Ellis. First story. First story. First story. All yeah. right. Long-awaited yeah. trailer for Dark Phoenix. X Men Dark Phoenix oh. is dropping tonight. Drops tonight. So there is a teaser tonight. out there. Right. There's some. There's some. You can hear a lot of pictures. A lot of pictures about it. A lot of pictures. Um, this so, is still Kinberg? Still Kinberg. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so that's dropping tonight on James Corden's show. Apparently the... So uh, it'll be up tomorrow. The, the okay. cast has rave reviews about Simon Kinberg and what a director yeah. he is, him on set, and okay. we just have gotten delays with this movie for reasons... Might be a good thing. We don't fully understand, but I think that the movie, it got pushed back again to February. Is but that Disney-related? I think? No. No, I, think I, I don't reshoots. think it has anything to do with Disney. I think it has to do with reshoots. I think yeah. it's probably extensive reshoots yeah. with the direction they, they want to go in the universe. I really don't think it has. People are going to speculate that it's Disney related. I just don't think we're quite there but yet. Can they play into Disney now, though? 
No, no, no. I, I, I think, it, I think, even if they wanted to, I don't legally. I'm not sure if they're allowed to. Okay. But I, I think that the only leg you have to stand over that argument is that they, they did reshoots to set themselves up to go in a different storyline two movies from now to be able to tie into Disney. And I just don't think that's the case. Yeah. I think it's more of a scheduling thing. And they may have tested it and come in and people said we need to do this and this and this differently. But I just think it's a matter of getting the movie right. Hopefully, the trailer kicks. Yeah. yeah. All mm-hmm. right. What's uh, what's next? Uh, keep it in the Marvel, not MCU, but Marvel. They did release a first clip, action clip for Venom, that just dropped, and oh. it's. Uh, I gotta say, uh, it looked pretty cool. I'm going. I'm going. I just put it up in the wind. I'm There's going. a screening tonight. Is it, oh yeah, there's one tonight, it and no, no. see it next, next week. Next it's a, Tuesday, it's a junket screening tonight. tonight so if you're junket. doing the junket, and you're yeah. interviewing all the people from Venom. <laughs> you you get invited to this. They asked and, me to do it. I heard going? some good. I no. heard some good things about it. I heard. I actually heard because people were Venom. Yeah, I really? heard some good things about it. I, I, listen, I watch this. I I liked this. Look, I don't want to see any more of it. To be honest with you. Oh okay. I don't want to see any more. Close your eyes. No, I'm with Copster on this one. I don't want to see any more. I'm done. I want to see. I want to see the movie. I'm actually. I, I know that there's been a lot of people who've been a little down on it. The only thing that I've been down on, you've heard me say this a billion times about other different movies, but this one I think in particular, I was hoping this was going to be rated R. I know that they said that it's going to be a, there's going to be a rated R cut for Blu-ray. Um, I just think that they should have re- released it rated R. They're trying to try to get the PG-13 dollars. I get it, but um, and I don't buy the excuses that not excuse, but people are saying, well, they want to set it up to put them in the MCU Spidey. later. Yeah, I just and I'm don't... like, no, you can still do an R rated and put the character in an MCU right, movie if Logan, you go there. Logan was. In, yes. Uh, yeah, I don't really know if you can hope for something before you've seen it, though. Like, if you see it and you don't like it and then you wish that it had been rated R, I get that, but how do you know? And sometimes when you have to work in the parameters of a PG-13 movie, you actually get more creative. Um, so I, I, I'd agree with that to a certain extent. You more creative too. than rated R. I think rated R you get yeah. to be more creative because there's not as many handcuffs. So, I think rated sometimes. R can sink you because you just put in a bunch of dick and fart jokes. Yeah. It, certainly, it certainly can be a crutch. Like I don't nudity for that. no reason, right. fucks for no reason, I, I don't, I don't violence. Agree, but that's no why. But, but again, sometimes. look at look at yes. Sometimes for sure, like there's that stupid movie Semi Pro, which mm-hmm. is which is you didn't like that movie. With hated Will that Ferrell? hated that movie, and I thought that was I don't even know I was, what that is. It's a rated R basketball the, comedy, the which I thought would be mm-hmm. perfect, and it was there's no need for that movie to be rated R. Now you switch it to Logan. Logan is a movie that needed to be rated R. Deadpool needed to be rated R. Um, those are movies to me. So that for I violence purposes, do you feel like you wish Venom was rated R, or why? Yeah, I think the violence of it, you can be a little bit raw, raw but you might, Great be, you might be absolutely is, right. Uh, I don't know. Is Dumb and Dumber is rated PG thirteen. Yeah. The movie Hall Pass. Same directors, Owen Wilson, Jason Sudeikis, about guys who so get a hall pass. Yeah. It's an R-rated movie, and it just it, it it it's not it doesn't deliver because it's like oh we're rated R, yeah. so we can put as much shit on screen as we want to, and we can drop as many f bombs as we want. Sometimes when you're handcuffed like that, you do get more but creative. It does seem comedies though is more the example there because is horrible bosses are yeah yeah. Okay. I know that people. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, People are on deadlines sometimes, but I feel like anybody who's writing an R-rated script that's on the fence should write a PG-13 version of the script yeah. and then look and see which one's better. Because yeah. that, that I think sometimes oh, sometimes I, I, I like a lot of fucks. And, and, and honestly, with Venom, I think you have an argument there with the... With the R rating. Yeah, my, you know? mine's, vi- mine's more of violence purposes. But again, I could see this movie and and agree with Roxy 100%. I was but just I don't a little... know if Roxy agrees with Roxy. Roxy oh. just throws right. things Roxy's up annoying, there. I guess, huh? Yeah, uh, I am uh, fucking uh, annoying. Are you saying you guys don't Probably. have two fully formed opinions about a movie you haven't <laughs> seen yet? <laughs> um, I have a, a... The only yes. franchise that I can, like, off the top of my head think that PG-13 hurt it as opposed Major to... Major help... League 2. <laughs> was that PG thirteen? Yeah, oh. I was thinking Die Hards. So like after Die Hard yep. with a Vengeance, they went PG thirteen. Those movies really hit the. I mean, they really hit the skids. I think the only. I think the only one they did PG thirteen though was the fourth one. Was it the Justin Long one? Yeah, okay. and then that, because I, I believe that oh, even I though can. fifth one was garbage Terrible. anyway, I think I still think yeah. it was R. Okay. I, I think. I, I that, uh, Can you guys check that out? What was what was the fifth Die Hard rated? Uh, it was rated PG thirteen. Oh really? Uh, the, the, no, oh, so the, 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 the Live Free or Die Hard was right. So I want to know what the fifth one was. Yeah. Because what was Live it rated? Or die hard is the yeah, fourth. the fifth one was rated R, and it yeah. was not good. Yeah, no, it was yeah, terrible. Okay. So I mean, it, it, R rating had nothing to do with that movie no. being good or bad. No. It was just a bad movie. No, it was just a bad movie. Um, it and, was not and a good fir- movie. That first one. I mean, the the pre the, the prequel that they're doing. 
It's oh, still uh, happening. McClane. It's like I still so Can you Ben that? Ben Trouble yeah. Troublecock was or Troublehook. I always forget his name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shuttlecock? No, not Shuttlecock. How did what that, are we trying to say? Tre- how do you? How, what is it? It's Ben Ben Troublecook. Trouble Cook. Trouble Cook. I'm sorry, Ben. Uh, yeah, Shut yeah. Ben really Tre- good writer. Had ben, great concept. He, his, it is still the best. Not Shuttlecock. <laughs> Troublecook, and he <laughs> had. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you won't go. So he, he it would he, be so perfect. His for idea today was too. the best. His idea was the, the best. And I think Tiernan it. even like, kind of had had his eyes on it. But like he, it, his it was the anniversary of the Nakatomi uh, in in Japan. They yeah. ha, they have a, a celebrate a celebration, and it all goes down in Japan. That's yeah. the fucking movie. Oh, That's it. And Zeus is in it. it. He Zeus gets, is in he it. Gets yeah. Samuel Reginald Jackson. Johnson that can is come it. Back. That is the movie. I think he had that Get, in. Yeah. Len Weissman, go away. Uh, Bruce Willis, stop with year one. We don't need that. McTiernan you know? loved the script. Uh, oh, that's what I want to yeah. see the R-rated movie that is Reginald Bell Johnson's character, Al Pal, coming home from the first Die Hard, and he gets home, and he finds out they have new neighbors named the Urkels, and it's still <laughs> rated R. It's inside. But it's yeah. like his, and it's just like hard scrabble. Yeah. Like, the Urkels are barely in it, but it's still his it's life his as a cop. It's and a shame they the never... The shit he has to deal with at work, and then he comes home to this Steve and Laura yeah. drama. He doesn't want any no. of that crap. It's a shame they never tied the two universes. It's be the best There's rumors. The There's time. rumors. Uh, last story, and then we'll go to break. Last story. All right. Uh, Mel Gibson is going to direct Ooh, a remake moment. of The Wild Bunch. Uh, Roxy, keep it in. What's I can't. Wild Bunch? I, can't. So, I have a question He's for you, Roxy. such a little anti-Semitic yeah. fuck. I have a question for you, though, with that. Yes. I have a question for yeah. you. Yeah. Jesus you, was you. Don't, wait, but Jesus you don't, was you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. Yeah. Because like, you, I, I've heard you very outspoken on Mel Gibson. Yeah. Now, you run in circles where yeah. Mel Gibson is a friend. I know. So I ha- run in circles where Trump's a friend. Okay, so now yeah. have you met Mel Gibson? He was at a, the same party yes. that I was at once. Yeah, I remember. We, same, so was I. We I was there. there. Yeah, yeah, but we did not. We did not. You wouldn't want. You just avoided it. Here's the thing. I, I because of my job, I still see his movies. Uh, what, what was that amazing one that he did the other? Hacksaw Ridge. Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. It was oh. really he's a fantastic good. director. He's one a, of the best of all time. He's a very talented person. I I wish I could find a way to not support him. I, I don't. Um, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I, I understand. I understand the things that he's done both for against. Um, Jewish people in general, that whole tirade that he had, and then the, that rant and absolutely tirade that he went against uh, his ex girlfriend. His mm-hmm. dad came out and said that the Holocaust did not happen, and then Mel did not say the Holocaust didn't happen. He said, "I agree with everything my father just said." So, as the resident Jew over here, it, I mean, talk about. Uh, I'm not easily offended, but like you can't just fucking say that it didn't happen. Did he say that though? Are you the, sure? The father said the it. The father said and that. And then Mel was like, "I'd like to boop, see." Boop, I'm not. Boop, I don't. Boop. I don't say that you're wrong. I would just like to see. I always get I, nervous if he ever came when those quote when those yeah, quotes yeah, happen. Yeah. I want to make sure that he actually did say that about his father. And it was something that was like on years ago. Um, but I don't know if we find it on YouTube. I yeah, think it was Google. Written. Yeah. Uh, I he he's had but people have asked him many times since like. What do you think about this? And he won't talk about it now. So maybe he's either changed his mind or knows that it's bad for politics or right. for viewing. But unless he comes out and says, I believe the Holocaust fucking happened, I, I which, why do you even have to say that? I, it's so hard for me to support him yeah. because he's very anti Semitic. And there's, and there's tons of people out there that agree with you 100%. And I think that, I mean, it's, and it goes back to the conversation you guys were having yesterday, right? And it really made me think about like the Michael Jackson thing when you guys brought it up. And Johnny Depp. Yeah, but the difference, like Michael Jackson, the thing is to hear, and it's, so, it's such a strange thing. Now, if you look at all the stuff that happened in regards to the accusations and people that have spoken out about Michael Jackson, if you compare it to, say, like Bill Cosby, You'd say that they're probably it's probably close to one and the same that there might be some shit that went down with Michael Jackson. It's fair mm-hmm. to say that there's it's possible. Not but, comparable with, with with Cosby's accusations. No, 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 no. What I, what, yeah. I, what I mean is that enough Three people enough years. people came out with Bill Cosby, right? And then they really investigated it, put put him on trial, and now he's going. Now he's guilty. There was a lot of payments made around the corner with with Michael Jackson that things went away. And there were, and I think on deeper investigations, you might have or might not have found some stuff. The, the the problem was that there was a lot, there was a lot of bad that was he was accused of. That's that's all I'm saying, right? And let's say that there are so many kids that had come out and said that things had happened with him. It is still strange to me that when I'm driving and Thriller comes on, I can't help but just 
pump it up. But he's one of those guys. Here's the problem I think a lot of people have is like it, it's it, people have no faith or or confidence in their own opinions anymore that yeah. they have to convince everybody else to see things the same way yeah. where if I think Mel Gibson's a great director and I think Mel Gibson should be able to work again do whatever he wants why is it incumbent upon me to convince anybody else to be, be yeah. out there screaming like hey you like Roxy I can't believe this like who in their right mind would tell someone who is Jewish that Mel Gibson deserves all right. it's the dumbest thing I've ever ever seen where people are like wait a minute because i believe Give this a chance. about this right. you have to feel right. the way i do or else somehow i failed that day uh, i could go yeah. across the street right now and buy a ticket to go see a movie that somebody made that's controversial and i will enjoy it or i will not enjoy right. it but for you to go out there and say oh don't worry about this stuff don't worry about johnny depp or don't feel this way about that stuff it's because people have no faith in their own opinion just right. like what you like uh, yes. and you don't have to and and it's all always going to be a conflict within every soul is going to be a conflict yeah. like do i really want to go see the queen movie because i believe the people who are accusing brian singer of this awful shit right. i still want to go see the queen movie Me too I, I think that it comes with maturity because for a long time growing up if i didn't want to watch something because of whatever it was i needed everybody else to not want to watch yeah. it too but now i'm not going to tell anybody out there don't go see this movie but and if anybody has the right to do that i think it's you yeah. i think it's somebody who is a group of people who was attacked by Mel Gibson, well, well, I think you're probably the people who have the only right to well, do that. Well, wait right. a minute, but doesn't that, isn't that a little, con you're, you're, a little you're being a little bit of a con contradiction there, I think. Just only because like to her own people, I think sure, right? Yeah. But, like, but to like someone else, let's say let's say that you're a, you're a huge Mel Gibson fan, okay? So, and she says to you, you cannot see this movie. Yeah. You, you can't see it. You're saying that that's okay for her for her to do, but you. But if you yeah. said, well, you should see this Mel Gibson movie because I feel that he deserves a second chance. You're not allowed to say that. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, it doesn't I mean I have, it doesn't mean I have to listen. It doesn't mean I have to listen to Roxy or anybody else. But I'm not going right. to say that. But I I do get what you're saying. It ah uh, he. What about, See, so about the concerns? See, I feel more about the concerns. I feel like, like look, I, I feel like her saying, here's my so point, I'm not going to see the movie every, because here's why. Everybody feels like their opinion is of equal yeah. weight. And, and it's not. It's not. I it's see what not. you're saying. I see what you're saying. That's so so I, true. I, I can go out there and I can say this is my opinion. Right. And that's fair to do. But everybody. You're every, not going through the same type of stuff and don't have the same Everybody background. feels like I they're at a fucking saying. PTA right. meeting right, right, and right. they all get a chance at the mic. Right. And in certain circumstances, your voice is not the biggest yeah. one in the room. That's hard for people to accept. Right. All right. Well, oh, this, no, listen, I, this I, is. This is a easy we, chat. We, we do. I, I will start. I was banning the chat. Yeah. Well, I will no, 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 look, look. It's, it's, don't, don't. The one thing <laughs> is, you expect it. Look, I want you to stay off the comments right now. When we knew that when you not when there's up. racist shit, I will right, ban the fine, hell fine. out of it. Listen, them. now we're gonna move on because we are gonna come back and actually talk about Creed. Uh, we're gonna talk about Creed, and then we have Romney Malco coming in at the 11:30, and we're excited. So take us out. <laughs> Tallahassee's own Creed. <laughs> Collider fans, I'm Christian Harloff, and you see my stupid name in the background because that's my other show. It's one on one with me, Christian Harloff. What the hell is it? I just sit down and talk to people. I literally just sit down and talk to people about what the hell's going on in their lives and their careers. And it's a long form interview show. Uh, originally, it aired on Collider Video as far as the YouTube channel goes, but we moved it on over and it's on the Collider Video Podcast, Collider Podcast, excuse me, on YouTube. Go on over there if you want to see the video and to see the pretty faces that I'm talking to. Had some great guests over the past. Um, and we're going to have a lot more. And there's going to be people that you, maybe some celebrities or actors and actresses, producers, writers, all that stuff. But there's also a lot of the people that you know around here. I could have Copster on there. I could have Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Mark Riley, Roxy Stryer, whoever. And I'm going to find out more about them. Long form and also go to Apple Podcasts and check out the one-on-one -on -one feed with Christian Harloff. And not only is my show on there, Mark Riley, the Riley Roundtable, which is another sit-down, long-form interview show. That's also there. And when Steve Frosty Weintraub talks to Kevin Smith or George Takei, that's going to be on that podcast feed also. So if you're taking a long drive and you like those long-form interviews, pop on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff. Give it a rate, comment, do all that because it helps the show and it makes Podcast One go, hey, you know what? Those people should get ad money.
Oh, hi guys, it's Perry here, and I am gonna tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh. Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening right now. Uh, we started it a few couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. We've had some great programming on there already. For those of you that have already watched, thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show with, that I host with Jack Hind, that's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me and Jay Williams as well, for you might know him from uh, the After Schmo show. What is, what is that thing called? Afterthoughts. Afterthoughts, that's it. The Afterthoughts show. All those things are happening here at Collider. And look, we want to hear from you, so we want you to listen, we want you to watch. If you're a sports fan, even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them and then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now that's as far out as we'll go uh, or cricket but uh, maybe in the future if we go collider worldwide that's certainly a possibility but for right now collider sports is there for you take a look at it take a watch and let us know what you think hey guys riley here and let me tell you about the riley roundtable that's right they gave riley his own podcast the riley roundtable is on its new home and that is one-on-one -on -one with christian harloff on the itunes feed for podcast one it drops every thursday the riley roundtable is a little bit about everything it's about movies and life life and movies and everything in between i like to have non special guests for discussions like justice league versus batman v superman for discussions about wine tasting for discussions about ufos and everything in between that's right the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff podcast feed and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Oh, we're live? we're live? Oh, sorry. Hey, we're back. What was that? Is that why you guys were banging on the wall? Nobody's over there. What is happening right now? It's chaos what? and there's Collider Live. Sit we, down, we're live. The music was playing and then we put the logo up and then we started banging. Oh, you're banging on the wall to let yeah. us know that we're alive? No, that... Well, yeah, that's what yeah. they told me yesterday because I've never like brought us back I was talking before. about things that I know, I know what it usually happens. And they're like, and yeah, the logo. Yeah, yeah, we're they're fine. like, once yeah. you see okay. the logo... Then that means go. Yeah. Yeah, but they but that just scared me. How 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 the fuck What's I'm all? sorry, I nev I never get in I never lean into you guys, but how the fuck can we have hot mics and not know that they're gonna be hot? Like <laughs> that is uh, so no. What do you mean? What's wrong with you? I, I just don't like that. I don't like they, that. I mean, they told, I don't think they, the mics were hot. I think the knock happened. And no, they told us. They, 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 I mean, they I mean, say yeah. We, we said we're we're, li we're live in one minute, and then one minute passed. I didn't and we're hear like, that. We're live. Uh, Get me on the What's Tony, wrong with Tony you today? Get... No, nothing wrong. Well, yeah. No, I, wrong I, I understand today. the principle. Is that is yeah. it? Is, no, the, she the, wants the... to know. But I, I you seem, yeah. you seem, you seem. No, I just hot. that's like my number one biggest thing that I like. Mics cannot be hot when when it we rocks. don't know that they're hot. Right, here we go. So when got... the music plays, the mics are hot. I didn't know music was playing. Nobody had the headphones you, on. Well, you, the, I don't want to wear But whose fault is that? Well, if I need, okay. So tell me, tell me when I get into the room, I have to put on the headphones, and I will 100 percent do that. I follow instructions. Now here's here's the thing. Now, guys, you guys, you guys know a lot of times that I, I have broken your balls. No, I never break their balls. I think they're fucking I, I'm, amazing. I'm going to tell you this. I'm on their side on this one. No way, Christian. I'm on their side. No they, way. Not if you knew what I was just talking about. They, they, you, when you're in this room, 
If you're sitting down at the table, you I, should have. I wasn't sitting down. I was standing well, in the that, corner. Whose fault is that? Uh, how in the was room. I supposed to know we we're, were going break. live? We're in a break from. Th- we're about to come back in two minutes. It's their job to get us ready. How, have the how headphones was I supposed to know go. we were going live? How was I supposed because to know? Because you're on the show every day from Monday. I'm in the Wednesday? corner of the room. But, I'm in the corner, standing up. It, does this make sense to you? Uh, Guys, I'm gonna have to go a... with you on this one. Right. <laughs> there's, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking All way. Right. This is a communication thing. We're gonna work on this. We're gonna. A hundred percent. If you guys want me to have my headphones on while I'm in this room, right. I can Roxy, do that. Roxy, Roxy open your stand up with this one. Let's do, we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll do that. It doesn't right. seem to be landing as I well. I think what might be is a nice. This butt right here. <laughs> By the way, um, yeah. not to uh, not to further raise Roxy's competitive <laughs> ire, but um, there, there's a new there, there's a new entrant in the wants to do a set. Oh, uh, and can it, I can oh I guess? Oh God, is it yeah. Jeff Snyder? Is it Beardo? No, it's not Cody, is it? No, nope. Copster? No, nope. Alex. They Frosty. live on the other side of the wall. Frosty, Frank. Frank, the editor, wants to do a huh. set. Has submitted. I don't know if I want to. request. You can take it. I bet you, Frank. You know what? You said it yesterday about Hysterical. how. Well, you said the class clown could bomb doing stand up, or the or the weird dude sitting in the back writing the jokes. That's Frank. I mm-hmm. bet you, Frank would crush. Frank. Frank's timing. <laughs> yeah. Frank, Frank's timing yeah. is impeccable. Frank, Frank, what Frank wrote is, "How do I audition to host the upcoming Collider Live comedy show?" And I think to I post I, it. Yeah, I I, I, I quote tweeted him and I said send a tape. So I thought we'll he said we're gonna host. We'll see what he says. Is, that, is hosting is that not, it hard that, or easy? Huh? Hard. Is that not? Is Ken, I thought Ken and I were going to host. Is that is that not a is that a? <laughs> you work out. Let's let's work this out some other time. Let's move. Let's, <laughs> are these mics hot? Yeah. Let's move on. I want to move on because we're gonna have I agree. Creed. Thank you. Creed. I agree. So Creed Thank came you. out. Creed trailer came out. It dropped today. And everybody was waiting for us to talk about it. Ba, 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 and you see, they blended in that a little bit. They blended ba, in a little ba, 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 of the Rocky yeah. too. Let's let's play the, let's play the trailer. Yeah. Not that great. Oh, no, Creed that's trailer. not that great. Creed, um, Creed trailer. There it is. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. So here, have you seen it yet, Makuga? No. All right. So here we go. Oh. Turn it up, please. If we don't do what we love, it's outside. Then we wouldn't exist. Boom. Yeah. Damn, kid. I still think Rocky eats it, and I'll tell you why in a second. I think he's dead. Eats no. him? He's a ghost right there. Like, yeah. like this. Oh, eats it, eats it. He's dead already. Really love matters to him right now. He well, he looks like he's the champ, obviously, with all that press there. You gotta think real hard about this. Do you got people that need you now? I love this trailer. Fight. Yeah, it's a great trailer. Chills. Victor Drago, son of Ivan Drago. <laughs> yes! yes! Apollo Creed appeared today to issue a challenge to Adonis Creed. Don't do this. I like I the hallways, the, the like street the scene. Your father said, and you died right here in my hands. I can do that. <laughs> but I'll that tell you why. Raised in hate. He's raised in hate. I love that line. It's dangerous. Look at that. Oh! Oh! Have you not seen his hit, right, uh, Ellis? He broke things. Yeah, I didn't see the push up rope up. thing. It ain't worth it. He's like Adrian and I'm from Rocky Four. It's not just us anymore. Hey, yo. He said that guy broke his things street. inside of me. I love that. Yeah. Look yeah. at the size of that man. Yep. Yeah. That's straight Drago Rocky. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. Yep. One of the best trailers in a long Great time. Great shot. Now, that's not. That's, I don't think that's from the, main, the last fight, though. The little DMX. Awesome. If this doesn't make you feel anything, you're dead inside. Yeah. 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 This won't be the end of me. Or you. The movie looks fantastic. Good we lord. Because be, we're a team. Yeah, it looks like a lot bigger of production. And it looks like if this movie lands, we can get Creed 3, Creed 4. Yeah, then Creed 5 is Creed, Creed 3. He's fighting uh, Clubber Lane. Clubber Lane's kid. I was trying to pull the name. Round after round, you learn more about yourself. And when I stepped great, in that ring, it wasn't all about me. Awesome. Um, yes. He, his, Can we go back to one thing in the trailer real quick? Sure. Can, you you guys, Can you guys go to, uh, <laughs> go to exactly two minutes into the trailer? Okay. Exactly two minutes into the trailer. Okay. You I want to. I, I want to point something out here. What do you got? Yeah. It, go ahead and play it from here. 
and just let it run from two minutes on I, who's in the ring and who's outside the ring training right right there i don't know little kids but that's what i'm saying is that is that rocky is like oh rocky's right there rocky training is kids. training the knights of red <laughs> that's right <laughs> there's a well, bunch of new bot we're gonna get creed but we're gonna great, get rocky movies call. we're gonna get adrian movies rocky ain't gonna make it out of this movie I'll tell you why, because like I, I, the first trailer that they showed was a lot more revealing, and they, and they cut around it um, in this one. He, at the end, uh, he's not with Rocky for this fight. Rocky's not at this fight. I'm telling you, Rocky's a ghost. No, Rocky's not a ghost, but he's not. But ghost he's, Rocky. But why he's do you think like Rocky's Mick. a ghost? I just think Rocky's I think not. It's... I love that Michael Buffer's there, I'll tell you that. I don't think you can say definitively that Rocky's not at the fight. You're surmising that. He and doesn't I, walk him to the ring. I don't like... When you predict people are going to die in they movies, usually die. because they usually die in movies. Yeah. <laughs> but you're and, the Grim Reaper. Yeah. But, I Do you mean, think story-wise that would be the smartest play for them? Um, I think depending on how they told it, sure. I, would I want to see it? No. Rocky's one of my favorite characters in film history. You but, and I have talked about this. Yeah. Is it because I, I I happen to agree with you before I saw this trailer? Yeah. I, I just think that the, the, the narrative is that they're going to do like the Rocky three, Rocky four. Storylines mashed Mickey, into one. Mickey died. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. the new yeah, element, yeah, yeah. because this is going to lean, I think, heavier than Rocky Four did on uh, Adonis's family, because he's got this new family unit. Mm -hmm. He's got a kid. He's got a wife. Or, he's the you champion. Know, and he's the champ it, in all likelihood. Well, you saw him with the belt. So it's different things that he's fighting for, because yeah. Rocky's not necessarily fighting for the same thing. And Rock, he's fighting for revenge, and that's part of what Adonis is thinking in his head. But he's also trying to defend his honor. He's trying to defend his family. Yeah. And so him taking the fight is a big risk, particularly when you see like look, I can do the pull ups that the, the yeah. what's the drag oh, I was doing? The ropes. The the push up. Yeah. He the man pushes himself up. It's a real boxer. And then he grabs yeah. ropes up in midair. The size of him is huge. And then he lands again. Yeah. That's harder to do. Then the one arm push no, up I to know. Rocky. Listen, was doing. listen. He's. I think that the, it's something you said that I agree with. That I think is very interesting. Is the that Knights they, of Ren comment? Well, no. That they leapfrogged and they're going to combine the Rocky three element because at the end of at the end of Creed one, it looked like they were setting up that fight against Andre Ward for the title, which I think they're probably doing the opening scene of this movie. But I thought that that's what 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 Creed two would be was the quest for the title because that's what that's what the the second Rocky was mm -hmm. all about. They have gone past that. It looks like right in the first scene he'll get the title he's the champion but it's they're going right to the drago storyline and i think that they are going to combine that that rocky three element of don't do the fight kid you can't take the fight you know i've seen this guy broke things in me it's same thing like hell you ain't been hungry since you won that belt type thing and then rocky dies and he's got to go into this fight already he's all messed up already now he's got to go into this fight without his trainer and he's got to fight drago but at it's the, the end same it. because you talk about your favorite character in movie history yeah. mine was luke skywalker right and so the way that he ended up in the last jedi i was like i i accepted that this is probably going to happen somewhere in the new trilogy so the way that he went out i thought what he went out like a champion like, like a jedi should are you going to if i tell you i saw this movie and you didn't get a chance to see it yet. And I'm like, dude, Rocky survives. Are you going to be like, huh, why would they do that? No. No, I mean, I think, I, look, if Rocky makes it out into the next movie, that's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm on board yeah. with that, too, because he's the one that's taking us through this entire thing. If, if Okay, this trailer is ridiculous, but in a, good way. Way. Oh, in a great way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Um, <laughs> Take caution. No, 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 yeah, no, no. Wow. I mean, I love the first Creed, and I, I'm, I know so I'm going to love this movie. I'm, I'm a sucker for right. all of them. Right. But... Do you think that this goes beyond a trilogy after two, or do you think this is done at two? Like, what? Where do you? Depends. Yeah, it depends on the kashish. Okay. It depends on, I think it's definitely going three. Uh, if, if I think they'll movie, definitely be movie's going to crush. I think this movie's going to crush. I think the excitement for it because of what um, Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan and Stallone pulled off of the first one. Mm -hmm. Everybody was skeptical about it. It. People love that first movie, myself included. Um, Drago. Did he have something to do with the election? <laughs> but having, but but I think that yes. that's the intriguing part is what are you going to do with Drago? Because at the end of Rocky IV, Drago was kind of on board with Rocky, you know, and he's just like he, he respected I mean, the same him. Same point on Movie him. Talk yesterday, where he didn't he didn't come out with a press release being like oh, I really respect Rocky, about. Yeah. but at the end, Rocky's giving the speech and Drago. Do we know if he understands every word? Not necessarily, no. but he's nodding and he's like, yeah, yeah. fine. If this guy's changing, fine. I'll change a little bit. So I because the other thing this show doesn't really give away, it hints at the fact that he was he was born in this thing of hate. I love that. Line. I I'm not sure that he is going to be this hateful. 
one line curmudgeon oh, Drago? that Ivan Drago was. I, oh, oh, I, I, the kid. I, I, I the don't kid know. Is. I think Ivan Drago, just judging from this trailer, it looks like somebody who has been worn down by the constant barrage of hate that he gets for killing this beloved figure, Apollo Creed. Right. He's probably hated in America simply for that, regardless of what he does. He may have set up charities and schools in <laughs> Russia, and people just don't give a shit about it here. So I wonder what his perception of, of Americans is, of this new generation of Americans. Americans who right. probably only remember him, not for all the other stuff he might have gone on to do, but just for killing a boxer in the ring. Well, that's the other thing that's going to be so interesting. God, this, this is by far the most anticipated movie. Yeah. I would love yeah. to by see. Far. I would love to see the downloads and the amount of um, watches Rocky IV gets before and after this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know when do we I mean? get this movie? Yeah. November, Thanksgiving. Oh. Yeah, so what are the, what's, what's, the, what's the comments saying, uh, Riley? Yeah, a lot of people love this trailer. Yeah. It was unreal. Yeah, Roxy, um, you liked it? Oh, my God. I I forgot that I was so excited for this movie. Yeah. And, like, this trailer was, like, hit you in the face with it. I, I, I'm i a sucker for anything like this, too, um, with Warrior being, like, one of my favorite oh, films God, ever. A... I, it, so not that that's in this franchise, but just, like, no, movies but it like is. this. It's a yeah, great, yeah. It's a good, that's yeah. a great sports fight movie. That's yeah. a great movie. If boxing or fighting kind of movies stuff. are done well, they're some of the best movies, movies of all time. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is with this movie also that we're not taking into consideration is that Michael B. Jordan has a legion of new fans yep. after Black Panther. Mm -hmm. um, he was already... A pretty, he was already, well, he was already respected, but Black Panther is one of the most successful movies of all time, and he was incredible in that movie. But now he, for people who didn't know who he was, young kids that didn't know who he was, will now be following him into this movie, um, and it is going to add to it. And I think, I think you're right. I think we'll get a third one if it. A is good, which it looks like it's going to be. And B, if it makes enough money, we'll it, see a third. It, it could be the worst movie of all time. And I still think it's going to... Oh, it's to make money. I think this is a movie, like, opening weekend. They may not say it publicly. It's going to have its opening weekend. And the next Monday morning, the studio executive is going to be greenlight like, it? Oh, we're definitely greenlighting What do you think it's going to make opening weekend? Well, here's the thing. It November. opens on Wednesday. Okay. Um, because Thanksgiving weekend, it's like a huge weekend for movies yeah. because who wants to spend time with, with their family? family. Great point. Great point. So, or we want to spend time with the movie so we don't have to hear them talk. And that's a yeah. big yeah. if. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is a true story. My mom texted me yesterday. She's like, hey, uh, Junior, just wanted to see if you had any um, requests as to where the family does Thanksgiving because we're kind of spread around. And, and I told her, I'm North like, look, Hollywood. I don't care where we do Thanksgiving. I'm just letting you all know I might be there a day later depending on when the Creed 2 screening is. So I had to put that out there. The nice. movie comes out Wednesday, meaning it'll have like the Tuesday night previews, and then it's going to go all through the weekend. So I think for the five-day weekend that you're five talking about, weekend. I think 60 is in play. I think uh, it, all, well, all that considered, I think 70... 75 well, is in place. What, what do you think? Don't look, Don't bring that up yet, guys. Or do, no. you don't look. You don't look. Um, Your mom what calls do you, you think, junior? What do you think? Yeah, it's kind of it's a half joke. What, I am a junior. What do you think Creed Indiana? won worldwide to? We named the dog Indiana. Creed worldwide. What do you think? Creed there? worldwide. Um, because again, it got greenlit. I think, I, I'm thinking opening weekend, and then I'll do my math yeah. from there. I, I think opening weekend Creed did somewhere in the 30s okay. in the States. Uh-huh. So I think its entire box office run here, I'm going to say, was uh, maybe 130, 140. Okay. And then I'll say the worldwide was, I don't know what the appeal outside of the States. Pick a number. The Creed would have is. I'm going to say it did 220. Your math is not off. Uh, you're close. The domestic total was 109. Okay. And foreign was 63. So it made a worldwide of 173. Okay. Well, what was the opening weekend? Opening weekend was twenty nine million. Yeah. So you're pretty damn close. Yeah, you're pretty close. I, I'm telling you, man. Sixty is, in play. 60? 60 is okay. in play for the five day week. Is it weird that I was gonna, I was going to say like eighty, but I think that's. Remember when you thought Ant Man was going to? That's five that's our that's our kid week. that's our that's the, the kid in us hoping yeah. hoping. I mean, I would love for this movie to make a hundred million dollars opening weekend. Michael uh, B. Jordan was born to play this role. Oh, like yeah. he is so perfect for yeah. this. It's funny because I always had so our buddy Steve Simone. I always he always brings it up to this day. I had a I had an idea that I always want. I tried to get it to Stallone back in the day. I wanted to do a, a Creed spinoff, but I wanted to do Apollo Creed, like his rise to fame in uh, like the 60s and 70s. That's awesome. That, and, that's a good movie. And I wanted to do, and that's what movie. I wanted to call Creed. I wanted it to be Creed, Apollo Creed, uh, his, his rise. Like he was undefeated when he fought Rocky. He was undefeated. Yeah. Like what he had to go through, the time, you know, and you can parallel it off of a bit of Ali and Frazier together, like, and really make it a period piece. That's a tough movie to do, and I'll tell you why. I love the idea, but it's because 
You're right. You have the most famous boxers in history are fighting each other around the time Apollo Creed came up. So it's harder to fudge history in a way that, like, like where does Apollo Creed factor into Ali? Like, like in your movie, did he yeah. fight Muhammad Ali? Did he fight George Foreman? Well, did he fight Joe Frazier? Well, it's funny. The, 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 the first answer I have is they don't necessarily need to exist because in the 80, in 85, Mike Tyson was around and we didn't, we didn't have him. But the problem is in the first Rocky, they introduced Joe Frazier. Right. right, Joe Frazier comes in the ring. Right. But Joe Frazier was supposed to play was 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 possibly going to play mm-hmm. one of the, one of the roles. Um, and Ken Norton was who was the first choice to play Apollo Creed. I always your uh, movie, your rules. They do it on yeah. Entourage all the time, yeah. where some people like where Maria Menounos plays Maria Menounos, and then somebody who uh, Mandy Moore doesn't play Mandy Moore. Right, it just depends. Wait, Mandy Moore did play Mandy Moore, didn't she? In that yeah, one, maybe more than yeah. 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 I, I get the point. There's, there's other people that don't. The only <laughs> people that don't play actual <laughs> people are like yeah. Vince E. The Indians. no, no, that's not true. Like uh, that. All of the other actors, like, oh, like uh, Haley Joel Osment, and like the directors. Yeah, the, yeah, some um, people came in and did some different stuff. I, I see your point. I'm talking about like super <laughs> celebrities, though. Yeah. Like it was Mandy Moore. No, there's some of them that aren't. Mandy I don't think Moore it's played uh, a lead some. opposite him in Aquaman. In Aquaman. Right. All right. Well, good, I'll think of some. Good talk. Um, <laughs> let's. We're gonna. <laughs> Creed, Look Adam Look did have a beard. Creed Two does come out. <laughs> And Thanksgiving, we're excited to see it. Want to know what you guys think? Make sure that you are commenting here. Hashtag Collider Live on Twitter. And go on over to the Facebook group, Schmoville, and let your voices be heard over there. When we get back, we have a very special guest. That is right. We, at the 1130, which is three minutes away from now, we do have Romani Malco coming in to talk about night school and an array of different things that he's working on. I've wanted to have him on for a long time, and now we have it. Keep so those good. mics hot. Yeah, keep them hot. We'll be back. Don't Collider fucking Live. do that. No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi-Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? It's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself, we have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games, and then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey everyone, Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still pretty good, above 50%. You can watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 4 p.m. Los Angeles time is when we do it. It's live, so you can participate in the live chat room. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming, because it's all the latest movie news of the day. Who did what at the box office? What horrible red box movies Bruce Willis signed on to? The DC, the Marvel, the Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings. Are they making new? I think they're, they're, it's a TV show, and we still might talk about it anyway, because we love movies around here. It's myself and an ex expert panel of guests, including John Rocha, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show, and then we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us, so subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk, and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed.
Hi there. I see that you're enjoying Collider Live. After this show, why not check out Collider Games, where we play, well, games. We review games, we talk about things, anything that's going on in the gaming world, our opinions, news, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. If you like it, stick around and subscribe. Hey everyone, John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media. What topics are burning up social media? That's what we do on Collider Sports Time. I'm joined by my top 10 co-host, Matt Nost. Me and him, we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about NFL the Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, and the NBA, which is starting up soon. We're going to talk about that. We also get into UFC stuff, college football, all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time, and we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. Hey, everyone. I'm Scott Movie Manson. Just to let you know, if you already don't, every Friday here on Collider Video, I host a weekly film review series called Movie Review Talk. The title says it all. Every week, I'm joined by two guest critics of my choice, and they're never the same. We review the new films. We pick something that's streaming that you might not know about, but is really great. And we pick a Blu-ray for something that you might have missed in theaters. It is fun. It is infectious. It is the Citizen Kane of movie review shows, and it's only right here on Collider with this guy, Scott Movie Mance, Mr. Movie Release Dates himself. Check it out every Friday at 10 a.m. AM Pacific only on Collider Video. Stop with the damn Will you stop with Creed? We're done. We're done. That's not that Creed. I think it's funny. It's not that Creed. What Guys, if Creed opens the movie with this. If, but you know how James Brown was in Rocky IV. Yeah. What if Creed is playing? You, do, you lose. The, you lose ten million dollars at the box office. <laughs> because Creed's like a huge. He's, he's a champ now. So right. he probably brings. You think his he's going to bring Creed? Band. I don't think he's bringing Creed. He had DMX in the trailer. He's going to bring Creed. <laughs> uh, guys, we are back at this Collider Live, and yes, we talked about Creed. We talked about a whole array of different things here, but I am very excited here for our guest today because I told him in the green room, and I'm going to tell him again here. I've been wanting to interview him for a long time, um, and now we get to because he has a movie coming. Coming out this weekend called Night School. He is in a television series, A Million Little Things, that debuted last Pieces, night, didn't it? Right? No, it, deb it debuts uh, tonight. It debuts tonight. Okay, yes. it's tonight. And I have a funny story about that that I'm going to bring up. And he also, he wrote, produced, and directed, and stars in his own mockumentary film, Prison Logic. It is the one, it is the only, Romney Malco. Hello, Romney. How are you? Thank you. Thank it's good you. to have you on the show, man. Good to be on the show. So the funny thing is about um, the, the TV show is I saw, so DJ Nash cre created it, right? Yes. So the funny thing about that, when I was doing stand-up in New York back in the day at the Boston Comedy Club, um, he was the host of the show, yep. and he was the guy, like, he was the one guy that he would always give me advice, and be, and, and then I saw him pop up, and I was like, oh, well, he's doing well for himself. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, let's start with that show, man, because it looks, it looks people are excited about it. It's, um, it's debuting tonight, um, and so tell me a little bit about it. How'd you get involved with it? Are you excited? I almost feel bad jumping forward before telling you that when he was hosting it's called the boston it was the boston comedy club when he was hosting uh that show at the boston comedy club uh, that's how him and royale watkins became best friends oh wow is that royal watkins had had kind of made it he got his own show went to la it didn't go he had to come back he lost his brother around the same time comes back to his old comedy club to do his thing and dj standing at the door like you can't come in we're full tonight wow. and he's like I'm going to kill you, bro. <laughs> I'm going to kill you right now. And anyway, they ended up being best friends. <laughs> yeah, and that's and then so the premise of the show is yeah. that so it reminded me a little bit of Big Chill in, in yeah. a bit too. So the his his friend or the friend in the show passes away mm -hmm. um, and now all these all of these group of friends have to now um, they're kind of dealing with it. It affects them in different ways. Yeah, it does. So what what about your character? Uh m my guy is I don't want to say too much, okay. but um, I feel as though uh, m my guy is 
uh, affected by this loss in a way in which, okay, look, all of the characters to some degree or the other have become quite content with living what we would call stagnant lives, right? And they're not completely fulfilled in their existences, but the, the loss of this very successful, dynamic, incredibly inclusive guy, thoughtful um, and generous. The lo when he goes away, it kind of inspires us all to like, wait a minute, to, to you know, rethink the existences that we currently have and figure out what we can do to move forward. And my character is dealing with depression. Mm. And he's, it's something that I believe he's more so uh, genetically predisposed to. And I'm, I'm not sure that it stems from, tr from childhood trauma. And it's him deciding to figure out a way to live a happier life and be more open. So it's like a reintroduction of himself. You know? How much of those character decisions is, is on you to make as as the actor in the role where are you able to say, well, I think that my character's depression stems from this or that, or I think he's going through this or that, or is there like a team because it's a network show saying, we think this is the best way to go with this particular role? Well, in the beginning, you know, you do have those discussions. And I don't know if you've noticed it, but my character's name is Rome. My name, everybody calls me Rom in real life. My character takes pictures everywhere he goes. I don't know if you notice, I take pictures every fucking where I go. Um, am I allowed yeah, to curse definitely. on him? Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. My, you know, my, my character loves hockey. I play hockey. My character wears the same jersey that I wear when I play. You know, like you're a big Penguins fan. He's been, he's been, huh? You're a big Penguins fan. I am not. Damn. I am not. I am not. <laughs> Listen, a Penguins fan. Are you a Rangers fan? Uh, Rangers huh? fan? No, it's just that Willie O'Ree played okay. for Boston. Oh. You know, and he's like the first professional black hockey player, and I was like, oh. So. <laughs> oh! <laughs> finally got into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, exactly. yeah. that's awesome. And so finally yeah. got to, yes, yeah. thank yeah. you. So I was Are like, you from Boston? I'm not from Boston. Wow. I'm yeah. just, I'm yeah. just a brother who relates to the few brothers on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think the last good goal I had in hockey was a pass from it was a two on one pass from Cooper Gooden Jr. Oh, oh you wow. playing this the uh, Brockheimer League? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we, yeah. You know. I've been playing with them for years, okay. I mean, and then we have a, a, a pickup game that we play in Panorama City as yeah, well. Yeah, it's awesome. That's well, so yeah. funny you mentioned Cuba Gooding Jr. because I, I was telling you I interviewed Dreyfus yesterday because Cuba just did his uh, first directorial oh, movie, yeah. and um, and it, it, it's it's interesting because you see a guy like that, you see Cuba who's who's transitioned and done different things, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're talking about this role, and I start thinking because you've done a lot of comedies. I mean, obviously yeah. from Forty Year Old Virgin to Night School. Yeah, this is, seems like a more like a like more dramatic role mm -hmm. for you is that is it i mean i know yeah. you've done drama in the past too but this is something this is kind of like really front and center here i you know man my okay so if you watch like mad dogs the first episode of mad dogs i think that's about as dramatic as i've ever gotten on camera okay. <laughs> right um you witness your friend get murdered right in front of you and so yeah i mean you know i, I guess this is considered a drama but then there's also a lot of comedy in it and so for for me, it feels like, it just feels like life. It feels real. I can't convince myself that I'm that good of an actor, right? <laughs> but I, I am c completely certain that I've lived some life. Yeah. And in the life that I've lived, there's definitely always this need to make light of the trauma. And through... Through comedy is usually how we get it done. Right. I can convince you that you're great in night school because <laughs> we were dying. We on caught it, it yeah, last man. night, and I I'm looking forward to it for a number of reasons because I really like Kevin Hart. Yeah. Tiffany Haddish and I've known each other forever. She's she's a great comic, and I'm so happy for all her success. And seeing the trailers really made me laugh. But yeah. then you say, okay, well, night school. There's got to be other characters that are factoring in there to see y'all in the classroom together and to oh see the interaction I mean, summer school favorite I mean, parts of the movie school. Oh, summer yeah. School. I mean, summer yeah. School. yeah it was it, it was the it was the highlight of the movie to me is watching everybody in the classroom pitch in it was it it really stood out no yeah. dude I, I tell you we had listen if the movie <laughs> were allowed to be three and a half hours long we had so many classroom bits it was hard man listen Rob Riggle, Al Madrigal, Marilyn Rajkub, Ann Winters, Kevin Hart, and myself in a classroom. Really, that's a movie by itself. Right. You know? And Did y'all you know, get to improv a lot of that stuff? Yeah, we're hell yeah. Stuff? Was, was Fat Joe yeah. actually how did that work? Was, oh, oh, and Fat Joe. Yeah, but how does that work? Was he like was he he wasn't ever really Skyped in, was he? Was did they add all his stuff? Well no, well, no, he was actually sitting in a room next to <gasps> Oh, was he really? And really on camera. <laughs> oh, that's great. We were filming him on camera. Yo, this shit was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. When he when he did the fight scene, 
Yeah, the fight scene. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. We could yeah, yeah. hear that shit through the walls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the yeah. Well, the, I'm glad you mentioned that the, the dynamic though too, because you, it's those types of movies. It's that's what it's the make or break. That the the chemistry between when it's that cast of characters, mm -hmm. if the dynamic with those characters don't work. Mm. And then the movie doesn't work. I and mean, the way you described the classroom 15 years ago before you all became movie stars, that yeah. would have been an amazing sitcom. Oh, right. just oh, like, yeah. remember Head of the Class? <laughs> yeah. You'd yeah. make it like a modern day Head of the Class. Well, yeah, I, I kind of got like, you know, when we were doing the classroom stuff, I kind of got the Breakfast Club vibe. Mm. Yeah. And like, it's like a funny grown up Breakfast Club. That's what it felt like. Because people were trying to, you know, airing out their shit and trying to figure out where they were in life and. Um, just kind of questioning the decisions they had made. It's just that the people in that particular scenario weren't as bright as the kids in the Breakfast Club. Right. <laughs> well, well, I think yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's funny because when I was watching the movie, and the one thing that I I think that you, you guys did such a good job of it, I actually wanted to see more tie up with um, all your characters. Yeah. I want to. I mean, Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish were, were, were great, but and, and that they're they're the his role is really the one that you're following as yeah. far as arc. Yeah. I wanted to know more about you guys because I, I was so invested in inside of it that you guys are all there. You hit you hit the jokes and yeah. it works. But I wanted a little bit, especially from you, because when you pop up in the beginning, the, the Terminator stuff and all that. Thank like, you. Man. Oh man, it, it the theater we were in. I would and I said this to him last night, whether you're in the room or not. Um, that theater was, it felt like being in, at the comedy store in the OR like when the headliner just went up, but then the guy who wasn't supposed to come just crushes and goes, that's the guy. There is, that's a, the guy. There is a joke in the movie because yeah. like, we, we've seen a lot of movies together yeah. in our decade of doing this, so we're, we're like an old married couple, so we yeah, know yeah. if each other's having a good time. Staff it more. And I'm, I'm, I'm giggling throughout the movie, and there's a point where I'm, I'm starting to be concerned. And, I, and I'm like, oh, come on, come on, come on, Christian, get into this I'm very movie. tough on comedies. He says, he, your character says a line about a certain movie that I know has oh, yeah. heartstrings with him. And when it when it gets delivered, it's <laughs> like we just cut the Russian yeah. Yeah. in Rocky IV. It it's true. like he's bleeding. We got to yeah. keep going. And plus, going. also because I knew you were coming in today too, yeah. so obviously I'm I'm rooting for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm like I'm like, come on, I want it to be a great yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it it crushed me. So congratulations on it. I'm looking forward to seeing how people. Really React to it, um, and um, and yeah, but I, the, other, the other thing that they had, they had mentioned that I didn't know about until yesterday. Oh, I, I, yeah. want, I want to say one. You Please. were gonna say something, Roxy? Go what ahead. a doll! That's oh. so sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I compliment a lot of people. I was but, curious because yeah. Christian said he wanted to see more, and I haven't uh, yes. been able to see the film yet. But you wanted to see more of his character. Was there anything? Have you seen the final cut? Well, I did. I saw. The, I finally got to see it. You know, we we great question. We we don't. I haven't have... even gotten to the question part. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's good so far. Okay, yeah. I thought you were asking me what the types were of each yeah. character. Well, oh. I was going to ask if there's anything that you shot that you didn't make the, it that yeah. you were there hoping was would. So much. Yeah. <sighs> There's this thing that Blue Rob Ray, Riggle. Dude. Blue I was going to say know. DVD yeah. extras. Let's yeah. get weird. Rob Riggle. Look, I got to chill again. Rob Riggle, man. Just saying his name. He just. <laughs> he knows how to play a dumb guy like nobody else. That's all yeah. I can tell you. Yeah. Um, that was one of the things they did show. Like my character became a lot more comfortable with technology. Um, as you kind of got to see Marilyn Radcliffe's. Uh, marriage got a little better because right. she took a stance in her marriage. You know, everyone kind of like did. And they, they, they did it really, I thought, that they shot it all so brief, I thought that they were going to just kind of do a little montage, but that didn't happen. But I've never been in my life been in a movie where more people, I'm talking about writers on the movie, assistant writers on the movie, uh, directors, uh, uh, fans who get to see screenings, executives who work at you know Universal, reach out to me, either text or social media, because... And, and just be like, dude, you got to see yourself in this movie. Yeah. Have you seen it yet? Have you yeah. seen it yet? I've never had that happen. Like Before you had even seen it. Before I saw it. Because, uh, 40 year version, we didn't have that much social media back then. Right. And then when Think Like a Man came out, um, just to be honest, it until it became a big crossover hit, the media kind of shunned it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so we didn't have as much coverage. And so this go around... The way they talked about me in the movie, I thought that I was in the movie a hell of a lot more. I was even talking to Kevin. I was like, yo, dude, so 
how, how much of your stuff did they keep? Because I know I got a gang of shit in there. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. You're like, am I, I going to be on the poster? I, I, exactly. <laughs> I, I know this is your production, but did you sure you want to put me in there like that? And then when I saw the movie, I realized, yeah. okay, no. But was, that's my point. It's because <laughs> yeah. it was it was for those moments they hit yeah. so hard. That's, Thanks, what, people that's what you look about. forward yeah, yeah. to in a, in a comedy a lot yeah. of times, too, is like it, it, it's like a basketball team where you have your point guard and you have your center and they're the ones driving right. the action. But if you have somebody like Rom who's just parked out there in the three-point line, like what Ray Allen used to do, do for the heat where it's just every time you kick it out to him he's open and he's just dropping daggers yeah it, do you man. how how many times you should use the hockey reference there mark do you just, <laughs> hit phil kessel on the wing i don't know that's why the the hockey <laughs> sauce just... crossbar <laughs> yes. see i can understand how how the flow of basketball because i play yeah. basketball but hockey like, you're lost on hockey yeah. it's fun yeah it's fun to drink beer live because it's really cold <laughs> ice cold beer and 80s rock music blasting in the arena but Truth. you're just doing this the whole time mm -hmm. and it's like my, I, 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 I have, I love watching hockey, but mm -hmm. it's a little bit like when I watch UFC where I appreciate the sport of it, but I, the technical aspects of you it lost. Yeah. sometimes get lost yeah. somewhere where I don't understand, is, is this a strategy? Are they running a play right now? Yep. Or is this just a bunch of kids who can skate? I yeah. don't know. Okay. Okay. I don't no, get it. I, I don't you, I respect that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought your question got derailed in the middle of that, but that's, that's my right. yeah. Sorry about that. Anyway, my, my, my question was. <laughs> the fact that you still remember your question <laughs> just goes to show how yes. you can be quite yeah. incredible. Do you have yeah. a pair of skates in your trunk that I can borrow? I have a dream, Rob. No, I, I was going to ask you, because you, you bring up a 40-year-old virgin, is that the role that people, like, do they do people still, they see on the street and they just yell smart tech? You know, it, games change, man. Yeah. Um, today, with, you know, uh, what we would once consider the ancillary market has now become pretty much the main market. So with Netflix and everything else, uh, people are discovering that all these things, all these projects that I've been involved in. And so... I'm pretty much referred to as whatever they've seen. And it's no longer just 40 year old virgin. That's got to like, be a great feel. Yeah. Pe people call me Zeke the Freak all day, every day because they think like a man, which is another movie right. I did with Kevin Hart. Uh -huh. And uh, I get 40 year old virgin, but I get a lot of weeds fans. Dude. I would say probably more weeds. That's us. That's us. Yeah. I was going yeah. well, to throw That's it in. Right. He has been dying to talk to you about weeds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when they told me you were coming in today, I, you were my favorite character on the show, Thank hands you, down. Man. Thank you. Uh, and I was always really disappointed that in some of those middle seasons we never saw you yeah. uh, because I thought that your story arc and your character was by far the most interesting because yes. a lot of drug shows always go the cartel route and I was never a big fan of the, like a lot of that cartel stuff yeah. but your stuff with your mom in that show was I mean that's what made those first two seasons of Weeds like I mean premium premium television yeah man you know what one, thank you. I feel like I also feel like I got to be a part of the show during the part, the seasons of the show that I was involved in, seasons one, two, and three. Yes. That was the show that I signed up for. Yes, and it did become a very different show. And uh, one of the reasons that I ended up not being on the show was more so a discrepancy with business. I don't know how much of that you're allowed to disclose on this thing. However but, much you want. But <laughs> I, I, I would just uh, uh, Lionsgate packaged and sold that to uh, that show to. Um, Showtime. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my team had an agreement with Lionsgate. Uh, and for whatever reason, we were unable to come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. And so to a degree, we didn't necessarily need to come back. Right. It, I, it's like I was doing, I did 40 Year Virgin in the first season. I did Blades of Glory in the second season. I did Baby Mom in the third. You know, I had a movie career. I didn't necessarily need to be there. So you were okay with it? I was okay yeah. with it, yeah. And, 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 well, you know, I wasn't as a fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And, but, but, you know, and so what happened was um, on the creative side, I didn't know that the creative side, like Genji, the creator, I didn't know that they had wind of the discussions we were having with Lionsgate. Mm. And so what Lionsgate did was, I guess they communicated it to her in a way that was offensive or that she took offense. She took it personally, mm. clearly. And so then I ended up being written out of the show. Uh. And um, Have you been able to talk about that since with her? No, she will. I, I've, I've, I've supported acts that there are, uh, there are a couple of girls that are like funny as hell. That she was trying to develop a show around. I would go and support their stage act by literally being on stage with them. I've actually had to go back and do the very last episode yeah. of Weeds. Um, Genji would not 
communicate with me. No, still. No, huh? She wouldn't even make eye contact. I don't have any grudges towards her. In fact, in my movie, Prison Logic, that I wrote and directed, I actually thank her in the credits. I don't need a job from her or nothing like that. I just genuinely believe that she contributed greatly to the career that I have. Yeah. Um, and so I've um and so what I was gonna say is is that um it, it ended up working out, at least for me. It ended up working out for me because I really do feel as though those first three seasons of the show were so magic. Good. And for whatever reason, I've never seen this happen before. By being extracted from the show, I, as an actor, became more popular. And the character became more popular. Yeah. Which was hilarious. And it ended up helping me get work. But this seems to be a recurring theme that I don't want to continue (laughs) on a million little things, where I want your character to have a proper wrap-up. Whatever happens on this show, however many seasons this show runs for, I want you to be able to say, this is my storyline and it's tied up nice in a bow, as opposed to just being like, well, what happened to Rob's character? That was our favorite one. Yeah. No, I I think... I'm sorry. No. Go ahead. You go ahead. Well, I was going to ask you, Rob. Well, Rob, you, you mentioned you mentioned uh, pr- pr- prison. <laughs> There's logic. a lot of hosts. Yeah, but okay. you mentioned prison logic. And oh I w- yes, I want to talk about it because this is a this is a passion project of yours. This is, you directed this. You wrote this. You starred in this. I edited that. Yeah. Tell us about it, man. Let's let's get here. What, what's prison it about? logic is a character that I've been doing online since. MySpace. He's an ex-convict turned motivational speaker. <laughs> gets out of prison, and that's what he wants to do. And so I'm doing it online, and I'm doing like a live. Li- I do. I, I back when we had Justin TV, I'd live stream, and I'd, yeah, I, 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 I'd, 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 I'd condense those, and um, you know, it was just it just hilarious, man. And I thought it was hilarious, and everybody else thought it was hilarious. And it, like within the second episode online, the New York Times did a full page write up about it. It started blowing up. People started saying, "Yo, this has got to be a TV show. This has got to be a movie." All these famous people in Hollywood were like, "Yo, we gotta, we got, we want, we, we gotta make this in a movie. We want to do this, we want to do this." But just people were just talking. They just couldn't get anyone to really follow through. And it's because the character's so raw. How raw? Well, I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. <laughs> There's a line in the movie where the character's smoking a cigarette. He just got out of prison. He's sitting on the porch at his mother's house, and he's explaining what prison's like. And he's like, "We got this thing in prison. It's called a peekaboo. <laughs> and what it is is when you really want to humiliate a motherfucker, you push your dick between your legs, make him blow you from the back. This way, when you come, you can shit in his face." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 did you make that up, or have you heard of that? I made it up. Yeah. <laughs> just a dark, I'm just, just, just a dark man. You know where that's going to be attempted? It's yeah. not prison. <laughs> no. It's going to be attempted at college fraternities all across this great land. It's happening right now. That's a great idea. Careful, oh, kids. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, what's, you guys heard about so, the peekaboo? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say as far as so what's what's going on? Where are we going with that? Okay, right? yeah. I, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the process. Please, I, I did please. a crowdfunding campaign, raised the money, used the crowdfunding campaign to attract investors, made the movie, shot the movie last year, and um, I j- just about finished editing it up later this year before starting a, m- a million little things. And um, uh, I didn't. It's not the kind of movie you would submit to a festival, right? <laughs> you know, what I'm I didn't think of it that way. I was thinking like I know people in the industry. I'll take it to them. But my producers were like, well, if you could put it in festivals, what festivals would you put it in? Can, I, baby. Take the peekaboo <laughs> to the French. You know, I was actually thinking more like people contributed to the campaign, so I wanted to take it to the places that my contributors were. Florida, huh? places like Nashville. Mm. That's, where, that's where my money came from, right? So I submitted it to those festivals, got into all Brook, the Brooklyn Film Festival. Nice. Where I was born. In, you know. And so I was like, listen... I couldn't believe it. We went there. We started winning shit. Be- best narrative feature, wow. the audience award. When you got 70-year-old white dudes sitting in the audience watching a dude talk like that and voting <laughs> at their favorite movie of the festival. You did something right. It's something right. And so yeah. then uh, 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 Will Packer, James Lopez, the president of Will Packer's company, saw it, fell in love with it. They called me on a Sunday night around 1130 as I was driving through Daytona to my nephew's graduation. And they were like, listen. We need to know everything about this movie. We need to know how you made it. Boom, boom, boom. And then they were like, okay, here's what we're going to do. And they started hosting tastemaker screenings for it. And so we've been getting offers on this. That's great, man. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. It like, you know, goes to Canada. Well, look at you. Are like, we have been doing some peekaboo for years. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're riding the wave, though. You got you got yeah. a night school coming out. You got yeah. the television series. You got yeah. your own movie. It's, it's hell, hell of a wave right is now. Is this the it, last thing that MySpace is going to have produced? <laughs> uh, do you think that, is this like right. the last trickle no. of the drain? It, it's, yeah. it's a gift that never stops do giving. You, do you still keep up with any of your friends that were in your top eight? On MySpace. <laughs> on MySpace. You, you know, you're going to laugh your ass off. So I started my own social network, right? It's called Life Management Tribe. And 
a lot of the people that have been following me on MySpace followed me on Facebook, and then when Facebook dried up, they followed me on Instagram, Twitter, and now are at Life Management Tribe. What do I have to do to get into the, LMT? LMT, that's what we call it, the yeah. LMT. Um, you ain't got to do nothing. You just go there and Sign say, up. yo. Cause, but the LMT is different. It's like it's like a niche social network for positive people. Look, uh, so you I'm, out. Be, you're out. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, done. you know, done. so I have a, I have a no offense to you. <laughs> it's called the Alone app. Nobody follows me all by myself. Oh, can I get in on that one? Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah, yes. man. Because you know how it is with social media. Like, you, you, it's like a, the endorphins, you get yeah. the addiction. This, this isn't like that. Because people respond in really meaningful ways. It's like people. How long can that last? You know, I don't know. I've been doing it for like a year and it's some change now. And surprisingly, it just gets better and better. And I haven't, it's still in beta. I haven't even opened it up because we've got to make sure all the all the tweaks and customization we've done to the 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 site will be compatible with the app that we're building around it. So anyway, it just it's 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 been a I I literally I, I straight up did it because I was like there's anxiety around social media for me. And, yeah. You know, and yeah. there's just so much. You read the comments and the shit that people say. It's just a negative. I'm tired like, of waiting through the bullshit. Yeah, how can you be this negative on a daily basis? And I was like, I just want my own little shit. And yep. this has been, this has been fun as hell. It's a new one for the goal sheet is yeah. do the uh, do the Drago's kid push-ups with the rope <laughs> and then yeah. do the, uh, the life management track. Did you see track. that trailer, by the way, today? The uh, Creed 2 trailer drop today? No, I haven't. Oh, you got to see it. Uh, Treat yourself. Fantastic. Okay, it's great. Fantastic. Great. But, Romney Malco, thank you so much for joining us here, too. Once again, yeah, yeah, you have night school. You have a million little things <laughs> and prison logic. Yeah. So much more. Can't wait to see more of you. Please come back and visit us no. again. It was great to have you. Come man. back and visit us soon. You're always welcome. Good luck with the show tonight. It's on ABC. Yes, it is on ABC. At, uh, it permit, I believe it's 10 p.m. 10. Yeah, Eastern have, time and 7 p.m. My Pacific wife already said, uh, said it on the on 10 the, p.m. The it's, DVR. it's on the Harloff DVR. I hope that Bluetooth guy who's your neighbor shuts the hell so up during the, the viewing of that. Yeah. And I want to remind everybody out there that we have uh, two giveaways of Jurassic uh, World: Fallen Kingdom. You just retweet the uh, the live link, and you're. I would running. actually, you know what? Retweet. Yeah, retweet. I think Romney just uh, retweeted our thing. I yeah. did. Go to his. Go to his Twitter. So, so we'll do there. one for Romney. Yeah. We'll do one for the live link and then uh if you retweet my pin tweet it's my new york shows next week uh new york comedy club one show only october 5th it's pinned in my account you retweet that you're in the running to win the jurassic park prize pack which is jurassic park one through it's all the dinosaur movies <laughs> you can do that at my twitter yo yeah. okay am i sh- should i just shut up and leave now no no, 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 no. keep going i man. was in belize hired a guide to take me through like the mayan caves and all that stuff yeah, like that yeah. And I'm, we had to swim through this one cave, and when you swim through it, there are these bats hanging over you, and then you, you finally get through the water, and then you walk around, and all these insects are in there, but they're white because they don't get sunlight. And as I'm coming out of the cave, I'm swimming through the water, and I hear the dinosaur from Jurassic Park. What? And I... Swim as fast as I can, <laughs> run out of the cave, run up to look to see where it's coming from. You know what I see? I see a huge monkey. Really? Yeah, oh, and its wow. tail, it had a tail that kind of curled in inward towards its body. And um I looked at the guy and and, and and then my guide goes, Did you see anything? I was like, I saw this monkey and I explained it to him and I showed him the tree that it was on. And he goes, Yeah, that's the monkey they used to make the sound in Jurassic Park. Oh, oh that's wow. cool. for the uh, t- uh the, the For the T Rex. T Rex for oh, the T Rex. Wow. How much does a guide like that run you? Because I can get <laughs> myself down to Belize. How much is the guide gonna set me back? This dude was I think he was five hundred dollars for the day. Oh, that's not Yeah, a and then you give him a tip. So you're just like you know, you so five hundred and one dollars. Six fifty. No, I think that's great. Yeah, I six fifty for a day. Yeah, dude, I got to get in this LMT thing. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> you were, he was terrified dude, when he was telling you about that cave and the bugs. <laughs> yeah, you're no, losing your money. That's a no he gets scared. Me, no. He gets scared quick. Yeah, man. We, we've got scared. a live tweet. We're going to be live tweeting and live streaming on Instagram and Twitter today. The whole cast will be for the for, for the airing of this. So, right. if, uh, if you want to join us, please do. Make sure that you do that, guys. I wanted to thank you for joining us today. It was a fun show. We'll be back on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Once again. We really want to thank our guest, Romney Malco. What's wrong? We want to thank Scott Staff, Scott Staff for uh, providing yeah. us with this. Thank you for having Creed. <laughs> now I don't want to see Creed because of this music. All right, guys, thank you so much, and we'll catch you on Monday. Check out Movie Talk today, 4 p.m.